to Honolulu and the Sheraton Hawaii Bowl. After a week of sun and fun, luau's and barbecues, it's time to play football. The UCF Golden Knights have accomplished one of the greatest turnarounds in NCAA history. Nevada's Wolfpack come to Hawaii as co-champions of the Western Athletic Conference. Conference Offensive Player of the Year, B.J. Mitchell, will carry the load for Nevada. It's Conference USA against the WAC in the Sheraton Hawaii Bowl. This year has the WAC co-champions, the Nevada Wolfpack, ready to take on from Conference USA, the UCF Golden Knights from Central Florida. Welcome to Honolulu. Merry Christmas, or in the local parlance, Meli Kaliki Maka. Glad you could spend part of your holiday with us. Dave Barnett, Craig James, we'll hear from Susie Schuster in a moment. Normally for a bowl, it's a red flag if you hear teams say, we're just happy to be here. But in these two cases, something would be vastly wrong if neither said that because in the case of the Wolfpack they're coming here off a of five and seven season last year but that was five more wins than UCF posted in George O'Leary's first season as their head coach last year he's resurrected that program Craig as he has resurrected his career this year well he's kind of like that sleeping bear you know watch out because if you wake up the big fellow with the gray hair on top he's going to come after you and coach hard he has a history in the background that he's trying to get past right now and George O'Leary has come to this football program with an opportunity and it's like it's like hey I want to show you what I can do I mean he's a heck of a football coach and and I really admire the way he's turned this team around and it all started in the locker room with the attitude of this football team he rides the back of his quarterback local product Stephen Moffat who thought he would go to Georgia decided he wanted to stay and play at home so his mother could see him play every week and Moffitt has engineered one of the great offensive turnarounds in college football this year. I think one of his teammates told us that he's kind of squirrely sometimes in the huddle. You know, he enjoys playing the game. You know, he's goofy. He's very relaxed. He's improved tremendously this season. Made a lot of mistakes last year. Interceptions, bad decisions at the line of scrimmage. But this season, he says, I understand the game much better. I understand who I'm supposed to throw to and what they're supposed to be doing. You can see the reduction in the interceptions. And, and the production this year has been very efficient. If he moves his feet around, we're going to watch this today if he moves his feet around a lot when he's trying to throw the ball he's probably not in a groove George O'Leary is putting his stamp on UCF the Chris Alt stamp has been there for the Wolfpack since the 60s when he quarterbacked the team he is in his third stint as the head coach he's the only active head coach in the country who is a Hall of Famer the only way you can do that Man. is to have retired and come back and they are so glad that he came back Chris Alt is organized he is thorough he is prepared his players are matured they're dis they're disciplined we're going to show you a pistol offensive formation today you know it's really kind of neat the old pistol out there he's innovative but he's really one of those guys it's just he seems like he's been around forever but he looks like a youthful fountain of water the pistol kind of a modified shotgun designed to get BJ Mitchell the ball the whack offensive player of the year with a chance to go north south well, this guy's a bowling ball that happens to have feet and shoes below him. You know, he's very strong, powerful, and UCF is going to have to tackle low today in this game because Mitchell is very powerful. He's very strong. He's not a real fast football player, but he plays the game hard, and he plays it smart. So it's going to be enjoyable to watch him play out here today. 1,200 yards, conference player of the year. Believe it or not, maybe not their hottest back coming into this game. They say his backup, Robert Hubbard, may actually be their best offensive player right now. First bowl in nine years for Nevada. First ever for UCF kickoff next. Those who cover him today may never find true peace. Chris Alt, 21st year, 10 years as the AD and coach. He has brought this program from Division II through 1AA to Division I. And George O'Leary, longtime Georgia Tech head coach, had the resume flap that cost him the Notre Dame job. He was defensive coordinator with the Vikings second year at UCF, which wins the toss. And Brett Jekyll. Gets us underway, and his kick is returned by Curtis Francis out to about the 23-yard line. And the Golden Knights will go from there with Stephen Moffat, their junior from the Orlando suburb of Winter Park. Big arm, athletic body. He's been a starter since they burned his 
redshirt freshman year. He played three meaningless games at the end of 2003. Really should be a sophomore. He's finishing up his junior year. Highly ranked recruit and has made major strides from nine touchdowns and 10 interceptions last year, 19 touchdowns, only eight picks this year. And they start with a one-back look, motion from Rocky Ross. And right away they give to Kevin Smith, the freshman from Miami, Conference USA's freshman of the year. The rest of the offense for the Golden Knights with Smith, Jason Peters in the backfield. Ross starting for the leading receiver, Mike Walker, a major loss. They lost him in their last regular season game with a knee injury. Brandon Marshall has a lot more load on him. Darcy Johnson likewise at tight end. Up front, Brown Smith, Gagne, Marcou, Anderson, and Sitton. A very young UCF team with only 10 scholarship seniors, only half of whom actually see significant action. And a huge hole for Smith across the 40. A 17-yard burst and Sergio Villasenor with the tackle for Nevada. Three-man defensive line with Wilson, Hines, and Baylor. Four linebackers, Maga, Damaris, Cooks, and Butler. And in their secondary is Garcia, Stallings, Villasenor, and Wilson for Kevin Stanley, who was third in the nation this year at corner and passes defense. They had to send him home. He is academically ineligible. Another running play, good for about seven yards this time for Smith off left tackle. And Roderick Stallings again in the secondary, Craig, called on to make the stop. Well, you see Kevin Smith, you know, while you take a break, that was a, you got into the game quick there. Had to. <laughs> you had to, just like this UCF offense has. They like to set the tempo, establish it early, in and out of the huddle, and they're going to come out, and they're going to try to challenge Nevada. They're going to see if Nevada can handle their pressure of running the football inside. Well, Smith has already gotten the 24 yards he needed coming into this game to get 1,000 for the season. He's at 27 yards in his first three carries. And Moffitt going deep for Marshall, who won hands and touchdown. You see it. 52 yards beating D'Angelo Wilson, Brandon Marshall, the senior with his ninth touchdown grab of the year. Anything but routine, this one. You see the play action, what it does to set up Marshall, getting just a little body position on the safety deep down the field. And it says that Marshall's 6'4". We spent time around him this week. I rode the elevator down with him this morning. If he's 6'4", it's got to be 6'5 or 6'. I mean, the guy is a big, strong, great-looking athlete. Matt Prater on for the extra point. And in a minute and 40 seconds, UCF in its first ever bowl game goes up seven to nothing. 6 4 2 30 is what they say in the program. And, and a very confident, nice young man, Marshall, the way he focuses with the one hand, sees the ball. But when you're a big guy who can run like that, and when you have body position on the defensive back, you have the ability to block out any distractions. And that's what he did here. You're not sure he's 6 4? He's got man. six inches on D'Angelo Wilson. Looked like every bit of that. Yeah, no, I think I, I think he's bigger than 6'4", is what I'm trying to say. The guy is a large person. <laughs> he's got these, the, and he showed us the tattoos on his left bicep, which impressed our producer yesterday. Uh, I mean, he, he's, he's a big one. He is strong. Last year, called into duty as a safety. And the whole reason he went to UCF was not to have to play in the defensive backfield where he was recruited by a number of uh, schools, but he volunteered when the need presented itself. So he was very happy to return to offense. He said, I'm a physical guy, but defense was too physical for me. <laughs> it was hilarious. I mean, the, and the defensive guys in the meeting with him, they were laughing. They're like, hey, he made tackles, led the team in tackles. He got under the ground, but he wouldn't come up there and, and lay out. So he's given the Golden Knights the early 7-0 lead. And now Prater is set to kick deep to Robert Hubbard as the Wolfpack await their first touch. And this is going to be way beyond the end line. And Nevada will take over at its 20. And uh, more on Brandon Marshall and Susie Schuster. Well, Dave, one thought on that. He told me that time he spent at safety last year taught him how to use his body a lot more to his advantage. He said when he was a wide receiver before, he really wasn't as physical. He's not a burner type of guy, but when he's got a matchup like that against D'Angelo Wilson, you're going to see his body used really beautifully. So from their 20 now, the Wolfpack offense. 
Woods to average about 33 points per game under junior Jeff Rowe. Like Moffat, a local product. He's from Reno, second team all whack. This all felt at the end of the year, he was probably the best quarterback in the Western Athletic Conference. And they start with play action and a completion for Caleb Spencer, enjoying a homecoming, a Honolulu product, with about 150 or so family tickets in the stands today. B.J. Mitchell, as we said, WAC Offensive Player of the Year. Flowers, uh, a great resurrection story for his career. Salmons, we've now seen Spencer and Pudewell is a pretty productive second-team all-conference tight end. Kiefer Resnick, Green, Manu, and Mole, a converted tight end who has happily put on 50 pounds this year, up to about 300. Nine yards on first down. Motion from Sammons, and on second down and one, first carry Mitchell met immediately and stopped shy of the first down by Ron L. Sandy for the UCF defense. Carrington, senior leadership up front where they really need it. Nelson Shalligan and Welsh. Linebackers are Cook, Sandy, and Hogue, a freshman who starts for the injured Jordan Richards and Neil Vinson, Rashad, and a really talented freshman at corner, Joe Burnett, one of the top interceptors in the country with yep. five, second most in Conference USA. So third at about a half yard for the Wolfpack. Out of the pistol. They hide Mitchell behind the quarterback. Rowe, he gets the first down at about five to spare. Chased down in the secondary by John L. Neal. You know, I just drew there before the snap, and I showed you the, the lineup of this pistol formation that Nevada runs. And, and it's really a unique, different look for a single back, tailback, seven yards deep. Your quarterback is four yards, and he's right behind the center, so you're you're hiding the tailback. And it's a, it's a short one, and you can see how, how the, the line of sight for that defense, it's a hidden tailback at seven yards. Pistol, of course, because it's about half a shotgun. Here's Flowers with his first catch. You see his big, long strides, and he carries it near midfield. Nine yards again on first down for Nevada, and Ron L. Sandy on the tackle. You know, this, this, this Nevada offense is really, I like it a lot. It shows you so many different looks and feels, and, and it's so successful in spreading out and building on layers of plays. Now, today, don't be surprised if you see some things that are set up for later in the game and and if UCF has to be very disciplined today and see where the ball is going Mitchell right at the 45 yard line and I think they will again say he's just shy of the first down the tackle by Keith Shalligan one of the older defenders for UCF he's all of a sophomore out of Edmonton Alberta Canada so it is again third and one for the Wolfpack and you know what this third and one situation again you, you have a pistol look play action can work from here you also get the ball back deeper just a little deeper to your tailback because the quarterback's getting it at a deeper level well with both receivers left that's where mitchell heads cannot turn the corner and is again stopped short as neil came up to meet him joined by jason benson One thing that Chris Alt wants to be able to do out of the pistol is to run down the hill. That means between tackles. And we've got a bowling ball like eight. He has to realize as a runner, Mitchell does, hey, I might not have the speed to get outside, but I got the power to get that one yard. I've got to break an arm tackle or shoulder tackle. I got to get the first down. Joe Burnett drops back, waiting for the punt by Justin Bergendahl. And the punt is a good one. Burnett will take this one as a touchback over his head, a 51-yarder. UCF scores in a minute 40 on its first ever possession in its first ever bowl. Believe it or not, it looks like that just about anywhere you go. Here in the 50th state, we happen to be the Island of Oahu, the gathering place. Honolulu, Aloha Stadium. Sheraton, Hawaii Bowl. Christmas Eve 2005. Already leading 7 to nothing. UCF ready for its second possession, having taken only four plays to drive 78 yards for their first score. On officially a 51-yard Moffitt to Marshall strike. Smith knocked back hard 
at the line of scrimmage. Sharif. Well, Roderick Stallings coming up from strong safety, a local product, junior from Reno, Nevada, for Nick Hawthorne, who's out with an ACL at strong safety, has been since mid-October. Well, that sure was a nice tackle, and, and the Stallings has to support the running game. Kevin Smith, you can't let that big, nice, talented runner get a head of steam going, or he'll run for 15, 20 yards at a clip. Smith, who has gone over 1,000 yards. On that first possession, huge hole right side foot race. And glides past Stallings this time. Kevin Smith takes it 78 yards. The longest run by a Golden Knight this season. And even George O'Leary, Craig, has got to wonder, how can it look this easy so far okay here's why linebacker doesn't get out you've lost any ability to fill the lane you've lost your assignments and then it's a foot race and you've lost in this foot race category in the secondary there's nobody back there to catch up with Kevin Smith Smith's lead on Stallings was growing with every stride the extra point is added again by Matt Crater. Already with 9.24 in the first quarter, 14 nothing UCL. ESPN College Football, the Sheraton Hawaii Bowl, is brought to you by Sheraton Hotels. Best location on all the beaches. And in part by Saturn. Waikiki Beach, where both schools enjoy their off time this week, leading into the Sheraton Hawaii Bowl. And in just six plays from scrimmage, already 14-0 for the Golden Knights. They had a four-play 78-yard opening scoring drive, and then two plays, and Kevin Smith takes it 78 yards, the second longest run in school history. Matt Prater again sends this one deep, and again, unreturnable for Robert Hubbard. Monday, college football's leading active rusher, D'Angelo Williams, leads the Memphis Tigers against Luke Getze and an Akron Zip team, making the school's first ever bowl appearance as a Division 1A school. The Motor City Bowl, which kicks off Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN Monday. Our coverage begins with the College Game Day Bowl Special, presented by Outback Steakhouse at 3.30 Eastern. Motor City Bowl also available in sparkling high definition on ESPN HD. Big series here for Nevada. They have to get a first down. They have to have some success and get down the field. They can't give the ball back to UCF's offense. Fake to Mitchell, roll rolling and hitting Caleb Spencer. He's hit immediately after a gain of 13 yards by John L. Neal. And I really believe this offense has the ability to have a high scoring game. You see the pistol formation. You've got the motion with an with a back uh, H back coming across and Rowe gets his shoulder squared. This is an excellent athlete playing quarterback and I like his arm. You see him in practice and the throws that he makes. He's a good athlete who can buy time to throw the ball down the field. Chris Salt says a good enough athlete that he could probably play for the Wolfpack basketball team. Member of the state championship Rio McQueen High School team. Next year made it to the state finals and under pressure rolls. Shows the athletic ability as he's run out of bounds about the 38 yard line. Giving chase that time Keith Shalligan. Trying to set the screen up UCF recognized it and squashed it but there are several different type of plays that Nevada has in their arsenal this this weekend and, and it's a game where early on you may have to go to those element plays maybe sooner than you than you wanted to because once if, if they get down a little bit more those element plays are not going to work scrambling for four Rose sets up second and six Mitchell huge hole this looks like Smith's touchdown run B.J. Mitchell one man with an angle and driven out of bounds by Burnett inside the five. Mitchell takes it 58 yards and the Wolfpack are in business. This all starts with the tight end, 83 Pudewell with a block on the outside, fullback kicks out. They seal and kick out and it's a perfect job of execution up front. And then number eight, Mitchell's able to run down the field. And we said he's not a barn burner. But when you give yourself a little opportunity like that and people block down the field, you get you get some big gains. 
Well, fast enough to make it first and goal from the four. Robert Hubbard. He finished the regular season really strong. Strong enough, they said he may be our best back right now. He takes it off tackle, and Nevada's on the scoreboard. Hubbard, Jr. from Emeryville, California, who had a 146-yard, three-touchdown day, the upset over Fresno State. Well, what a nice job. Block down, block down, left guard, left tackle, pull, and kick out. The vision of Hubbard then to get into the end zone, and it's again nice execution. This offense can score with them. This can be a shootout game, and and the way it looks right now, that's that's maybe what Nevada's going to have to do is depend on a shootout. Well, they take it 80 yards in four plays. Four plays, longest scoring drive of the three we've seen so far. Brett Jekyll adds the extra point, 14-7. Robert Hubbard after his ninth touchdown of the year. Robert early with a strained ab the first month of the season. Outstanding finish to his regular season at start to his bowl game. Just behind Aloha Stadium, you can uh, just turn and look at where World War II began and ended. The USS Arizona Memorial on the right. And the battleship Missouri, where uh, Japan signed uh, the surrender papers in Tokyo Bay in 1945. That's powerful. I mean, what a... What a what a, an inspiration uh, and a memorial for all those families and the people. I was impressed that both teams, when we asked the players we talked to what they enjoyed most about the trip, they didn't say the beach, they didn't say all the fun stuff, they said Pearl Harbor. Affects everybody who goes. Jekyll. Burnett returns from the six. And a strong special team effort by the Wolfpack will stop him at the 20-yard line. 8.28 in the first quarter, and uh, already three touchdowns in the Sheraton Hawaii Bowl. Central Florida's first postseason appearance ever. Nevada's first in nine years. Coach Champs of the WAC just on the board after a four-play 80-yard scoring drive in 51 seconds following a 49-second two-play UCF scoring drive. 78-yard spread by Kevin Smith made it 14 to nothing. George O'Leary, winless last year in his first season at UCF. 8-4 Conference USA finalists this year. And Matt Hines, the nose tackle, moved up front. We'll see from this Mountain West officiating crew whether he was drawn offsides. Referee is Scott Offside. Novak. On a defense, number 57, five-yard penalty, repeat first down. And, and this Nevada defense, I think they've realized now there's a, there's a speed difference maybe over on offense right now with Kevin Smith running the football. They can't sit back in traditional. They, they're going to have to change it up. They're going to have to create some opportunities for stopping the run first. Jason Peters has checked into the backfield for UCF. And here's Peters, a junior from Seattle. He lived in Florida until... His high school years average better than five and a half yards per carry. Nevada strings him out nicely. Roosevelt Cooks and Roderick Stallings combined. Peters a load, 6'1, 230. Boy, but did you see the footwork? His feet there, the way he was able to bounce and cut back. Very impressive. Peters out of Butte College, the third ranked junior college running back in the country. Games of Nine carries, 110 yards against Tulane, 14 for 113 against East Carolina. Again, the Nevada defense shows up big, knocks it loose. They say they've recovered. No indication yet. Still waiting, and they have it at the 27-yard line. One thing about this Nevada defense, this team, is that they might not have the biggest and the fastest guys, but they play fast together. And getting to the football, the discipline and getting to the football created a turnover. And more than the creation of the turnover was the fact that they had multiple blue jerseys to get the fumble recovery. Moffitt knocked loose. Roosevelt Cooks lowers the boom on him. Team's top defensive player, second team, all Western Athletic Conference. Yeah, you know, he may have been down. You know what? I think his fanny's on the turf right there. That's not a fumble. He had control of the ball when his backside 
hit the carpet. Ezra Butler there to scoop it up. We do have replay. Wack did not use replay this year. They will next year. Well, they wouldn't want to use it on this one either. <laughs> they wouldn't, but <laughs> it will be reviewed. I think that last angle shows that Moffitt was down, and this will probably be overturned. Boy, I tell you what it does, though. They, they were running the option. You saw the back on the back side coming around, uh, a little misdirection for the option. And yeah, I, no question. Well, you know, no, nope. he's down. Then know. the ball comes loose. Yeah, but yeah, that this defense saw something there. You know, you, you've got an option, and if he kicks that ball out on the corner, it may have been a big play. Again, this is a Mountain West Conference officiating crew. Scott Novak is the referee. Again, is there enough evidence? Down right there, still has the ball. Now it's out, but he's now it down. Came out, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, but uh, I've learned something. You see here now. Watch if he kicks the ball to the corner. Look at the play. If he pitches that football, you got the ball carrier going down the sidelines. I don't think this defense is capable, with the speed that you're seeing right now, uh, of just playing your base solid. You know, let's, let's hold lane assignments. That they they've got to create with safeties coming up and run support pretty aggressively. Wow, what a shot though by the linebacker. Number 26 came in there and laid the Woodrow T. Wilson. Roosevelt Cooks. I don't think Nevada is under any illusion that they're going to win a low scoring game. They averaged allowing over 30 points per game this year. And that was with Wax third ranked defense. And the WAC traditionally has been all about offense. No difference this year. Here's Novak. After review, the runner was down before the ball came out. Therefore, Central Florida will retain possession of the ball at the 28-yard line. It'll be second down. And they got it right. I think every angle we showed bore that out. Yeah. So Moffa back to work. With a new lease from the 27 yard line. Leading 14 to 7. George O'Leary, the Conference USA Coach of the Year, won that honor twice in the ACC at Georgia Tech, where he headed up the program from 94 to 2001. Just the sixth team in history to make a bowl the season after not winning a single game. Most recent to do it in South Carolina under Lou Holtz. Big room, Jason Peters making the most of his first series. Kevin Smith dominated on his two possessions and into the secondary where Stallings and Villa Senor bring him down after a gain of 14. Uh, you know what? They're, they're just some big gashes in there. And right now, UCF's offensive line's playing with leverage, and they're able to get their booties turned to the hole. They're creating opportunities and big gashes for the running backs to get through. Already 125 yards on the ground for the Golden Knights. As Peters this time turned upside down by Roderick Stallings, and he's had way too active a first quarter as a strong safety, having to make as many tackles as he is. An indication how little run stoppage is going up up front with their uh, three down linemen and four linebackers. It's just the size and the footwork and and, and Nevada hat their defensive line. They've got to recognize what's coming at them. They got to fight through blocks. Moffitt has only thrown one pass. It was the 51 yard touchdown to Brandon Marshall. And still on the ground for Peters here. Still on his feet. Did we say he's a load. They never bring him down. There were about five blue jerseys who had a shot. Nobody could do it. Engstrom and Villa Senor had probably the strongest grasp of him. Made it to the 49 where it'll be third down and four. Got a guy for you to watch on this play coming up here. The tight end Darcy Johnson number 84 is just a heck of a football player and he's up here on your top side and uh, that's your tight end and he's a good player down the middle of the field. I'm out called by the Wolfpack as UCF came out for their third and four. This is the spot where Moffitt hit Marshall to give them their 
early 7 to nothing lead a minute 40 into the game they stretched it to 14 nothing Nevada took it 80 yards that's where we are with a timeout. Not too far from Waikiki Beach Central Florida facing its first third down leading 14 to 7 on their 49 yard line from which their first touchdown sprang on a Moffitt to Marshall pass still the only pass they've thrown here in the first how about play. that shot though of the beach I've got horses at home that I'm worried about not getting enough hay because it's cold <laughs> we're on the beach so if it hits 65 they break out the park is here high of 78 today they keep it on the ground Peters powers his way needing four he gets six to the Wolfpack 45 yard line first down Golden Knights I've always believed that a running back the tempo by which they play with the authority by which they play watch the runner here attack the defender and he wins the pad level he's below the defender cooks pads he delivers the blow the running back and then that offensive lineman is contagious they hear that they feel it next thing you know the whole huddle's getting after it. well George O'Leary said yesterday we just have to make sure we don't leave the run too soon I think there's little danger of that so far here comes Moffitt's second pass of the day and again looks for Marshall who had the first down retreated and got it back as Joe Garcia held on to his ankles for dear life so again, Mike Walker, second team All-Conference USA, UCF's leading receiver, not available, injured a knee against Rice. That much more attention for the defensive backs on Brandon Marshall. Well, you're going to see that they, they want to try to get the opportunity up top. They had to do the play action away from Marshall so that it would coverage would roll away and give him the single on the outside. So from the 34 of Nevada, another first down and a draw play for Peters. Broke one tackle, Cooks got him at the 31, a gain of three. Well, we haven't seen Dontavious Wilcox yet. They play three very effective running backs. Smith, who started, the freshman from Miami, who on his five carries has 107 yards, a 78-yard touchdown, second longest in school history. O'Leary this series going with Jason Peters. They list as a starting fullback, but in effect, their second tailback as well. On second and seven. Tight end Darcy Johnson went in motion. And again, they call on Peters through the middle. A little bit harder slogging this time to get to the 29, brought down by Craig Bailey. Well, I think at some point, Nevada's defense, they'll feel a little bit of what's trying to happen up front. But they are really working right now at UCF to set up that play action pass. And, and at this point in the game, though, Nevada has to, they have to worry about stopping the run. To heck with anything else, get the run handled, and then you can worry about the pass down the field. Well, they just converted their first third down opportunity of the day on a third and four. They need five here. And they blitz Moffitt. He picks it up, and it's incomplete off the hands of Marshall, covered by Garcia. Marshall just didn't think that he would get one on one opportunities in this football game. He right now is the receiver for UCF. And Marshall's got to make that catch. And, and, you know, he doesn't make the play when they get the ability one on one with his body size outside. He'll make that catch nine out of 10 times. Trader on to try 47 yarder as long as this year, 49. Career best is 53. Four year starter, senior. Found his own school record this year at a four field goal game against UAB. Wing tends to swirl on the field here at Aloha Stadium. Doesn't seem to be much down there. The distance plus 15 on that kick by Prater. Good. 17 7. 47 would have been good, maybe from 60. Improvement there. Nevada's able to hold him to three. George O'Leary, just, he's so old school, you just enjoy it. He, he gave us the, the roach and the ant story where he talks about when he first came in, you know, it was like walking into a dark house and turning on the lights in the middle of the night and you turn the light on in the kitchen and the roaches, they're all bouncing off the walls, running left and right and darting around. And he said, I had a few players who were roaches. Then he said, then you look over on the other side of the kitchen and, and all the ants are in perfect line, making a straight line. He said, you can blow them 
and you know they, they they scramble but when you turn it back on again you still got the same scenario roaches running everywhere and the ants he said i need the ants guys get in line and stay in line roaches no longer part of the program no right. you got squashed if you were a roach you got squashed players also said they all thought they were in shape until their first off-season workout under George O'Leary. Brandon Marshall, for one, says on day two of his off-season, he crawled out of the weight room until he could finally find some place to get sick. O'Leary said he had to add wastebaskets to the weight room because he didn't have enough. For the amount of uh, stomach illness his workouts were causing. Hubbard takes it two yards deep, third straight touchback from the strong leg of Matt Prater. Let's go down to Susie Schuster. Well, I just spoke with Jeff Rowe, the quarterback. I said to him, do you feel a little bit more settled down now? He said, I feel tired. He went to bed at the 10 o'clock curfew hour, but the sounds of the waves didn't soothe him to sleep. He said the revelers down below in Waikiki kept him awake. Craig, I told you to keep it down. <laughs> Man, I told Jeff I'd try to kill it, you know, kill it around noon or, or midnight or one or two, but and those waves just keep you going. <laughs> well, occupational hazard. When you come to Waikiki, Mitchell, we're about four. And that's the whole idea Chris Alt was going for, Craig. The, the traditional spread, what he didn't like about it was the running tended to all be east-west. And he is not a fan of east-west run. Now, I, you know what? You can you, you can be really cool and flashy at times, east and west. you got to have certain players that can get around corners. But at the end of the day, in football games, you got to be able to get down the hill between the tackles, just like that right there. Third and one while ago. Number eight's got to get a first down. The other benefit is you got a 6'5 quarterback hiding a 5'8 tailback. As the pass intended for Flowers, he's broken up nicely by John L. Neal. Redshirt freshman from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, who started every game this year for UCF in his third and five. There's that timing that these coaches worry about that coach bowl games. Your players have been off for a little while. Ball just a little bit late, but a little bit behind the receiver. And uh, some of that has to do with not being in game action and playing for several weeks. Only four seniors in the Golden Knight too deep. Only one linebacker, only one defensive back. And with this youth, they're going for their ninth win after a winless 2004. Lots of room for Rowe to scramble. Smacked hard at the 35-yard line by Jason Vinson. But he hangs on to it, and he's got a first down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what Jeff Rose all excited about. He jumped up, fired up. I'm not sure if he's just glad to get the first down and be alive. Here to survive this hit. <laughs> the, uh, Jerry Glanville, defensive coordinator at Hawaii, a friend of mine. I talked to Jerry about this game, and Jerry said, hey, you know what? The kid looks like Ichabod Crane, but he plays <laughs> like uh, John Wayne. He said, we drilled the kid. He kept getting up and playing again. That time James Cook had uh, a hold of him, waiting for Jason Vincent to come in with a knockout shot. Up pops row, rolls left, and this time Flowers had his hands on it again, can't bring it in, covered by Joe Burnett. Unusual two drops in a row from Mitra and Flowers. Flowers got to catch the football. You know, this is, this is a young man. He's got to make the cut. Get your head around. Get the head around. Find the football. you got to make the play. You're going to get hit, get the ball, hands on the ball, bring it in. But listening to the coaches here at Nevada in practice and the way they talk to Jeff Rowe, hey, stay with it, stay out there, be patient. It's not going to be open. It's not going to be open. And bang, there it is. And that's a great example of it. They just didn't finish the play with the catch. Flowers last year, 91 catches, over 1,100 yards. Not over 50 catches for the season here today. Robert Hubbard. For about four up to the 40. And the Wolfpack will face another third down. Brian Gabriel and Jason Vincent bringing down Hubbard, who raked Fresno State for 146 yards and three touchdowns as Nevada came in at the perfect time to play Fresno State when they had just come up short in the upset bid at USC. And in this game here, I, I get the feeling that, that Nevada's had to make the adjustment to the speed and the power level of UCF. Even though UCF is young, I think there's just a little difference in, and can Nevada continue to step it up? Real obvious early movement that time. 
by Hubbard and others as the snap came back late. Prior to the snap, false start on the offense. Number 70, five yard penalty. Repeat, third down. Well, they call it on the strong side guard there at Resnick. Third and 11. Wolf pack eight and three, seven and one in the whack. First conference title since they were in the Big West in 1997. Not a team that gave up too many penalty yards this year. One aspect of Chris Alt's discipline that was uh, very obvious, but not here. So on third and 11. This time Hubbard lines up to the left of Rowe. Who again has to escape, being blitzed by Cook. Fires complete. Spencer with a first down grab. Caleb Spencer good for 19 yards. The Honolulu native. Well, it all starts though in the backfield. You hear coaches talk about backs being able to pick up blitz protection. Number 19, Hubbard steps up, smokes the guy trying to come in with the blitz on the outside. And here's the footwork and the athleticism of Jeff Rowe. You know, 84 Flowers has, has failed a couple of times. Go to Spencer, try somebody else. Take the pressure off 84. Spencer's a hometown guy, wants to make plays here, comes up with a big third down conversion. So a first down for the Wolfpack, 47-yard line of the Golden Knights. As Rowe again throws on the run, looks up, head Spencer under through and it's intercepted. What could have been a touchdown turns into a turnover. Jason Vinson comes away with his third pick of the year. This is all a function of timing. The ball comes out late and, and long. I mean, it, Spencer is open. That ball should have been thrown five steps sooner than it was delivered. And you see how open Spencer is down the field. The right call by the coaching staff with the poor execution by Rowe. Rowe's got the pressure. He's trying to run and get away from the inside pursuit, but you just got to plan it and let it go. UCF's young secondary comes up, sees the ball, makes the play. The really impressive thing about such a young defense is how many takeaways they came up with this year. Back to work, Kevin Smith, the starter. And about a 12 yard first down pickup. Six carries now, 118 yards for Kevin Smith, the Conference USA Freshman of the Year. Have you told the story yet about how Coach O'Leary found this young man out of Miami? I mean, uh, he had scouted him and, and recruited him and, and served, studied him as a junior, and he was a tailback, and Coach O'Leary said they, they started looking for him as a senior. A new high school coach put him at free safety. What was he thinking? So he kind of fell off everybody's recruiting radar, except for O'Leary. And Smith cut down, open field stop, D'Angelo Wilson at the line of scrimmage. So Coach O'Leary, Coach O'Leary decides to, he decides to go out and, and, and find the young man, make sure he, the opportunity for him. And Susie, I mean, uh, he found him, didn't he? He did indeed, and I'll tell you what Kevin Smith is thinking. He's thinking he can be the next president, and that's because he studies every move that Reggie Bush makes. The other night at the banquet, they had film of Bush. He studied every move. He said, oh, come on, I can beat that. You know, for a lot of guys, that would sound ridiculous, but we've already seen why Kevin Smith can think that way. He's... Wrestled down for a loss of about three here by Roderick Sollins. His busy first quarter for the strong safety continues on what should end the first quarter. I saw a little stunting there. This defensive line is going to have to be a lot more active at Nevada if they're going to stop the run. They cannot. They've shown they cannot just stand still because UCF's offensive line will smoke them. Well, how about 214 total yards and 17 points? In the first quarter of your first bowl game, not bad for UCF. They're up 17-7 in the Sheraton Hawaii Bowl. Merry Christmas. Welcome back to the Sheraton Hawaii Bowl on a perfect Christmas Eve in Honolulu, especially for George O'Leary and UCF up 17-7 beginning the second quarter. Dave Barnett, Craig James, Susie Schuster at Aloha Stadium and the Golden Knights with a third and 12 from their own 38 undefeated this year when leading after the first quarter winless when they didn't Stephen Moffat 
Blitz steps up and will keep and has big yardage. Oh. Run out at the 25 by D'Angelo Wilson. A crunching block, Craig. Got him his last 20 yards. 35 total for Moffitt on the scramble. Wow. Man, there's a shot. I, I, the number got knocked off the jersey, so I can't tell you who it was. Right in here. Oh. Ooh. I think Sergio Villasenor got the Merry Christmas greeting down at the 40 and just now helped up to his feet. The sophomore from Whittier, California. Boy, it's good just to see him get up after that hit. Transfer from Pasadena Community College. Clearing block got uh, Moff with an extra 18, 20 yards. Wilson preventing the touchdown. First down at the 27 yard line. And taking the toss just for a couple yards this time is Kevin Smith. Let's get our first 30 30 update from the studio in Reese Davis. All right, Dave, plenty of NFL action on this Christmas Eve, including the Colts and the Seahawks. Sean Alexander scoring three touchdowns, got 27 on the season, matching Priest Holmes, Mark. Seahawks beat the Colts. They've got home field in the NFC. And the Redskins beat the Giants, but Mark Brunell suffered a sprained knee. Not sure if he'll be able to play next week. Redskins can clinch a spot in the playoffs if they're able to win next week. Sports Center after the game, ESPN News all the time. See you at halftime. All right, Reese, second down at eight. Smith for just a couple. What do you think? Super Bowl preview today? Colts and Seahawks? You know, the, the Colts' real challenge is uh, to try to get back up and, and, and get the momentum again. And it's, it's, this isn't something you just turn a switch on and off. And for Seattle, playing as well as they have, as long as they have, it's almost like you want to lose. What is that, 10 weeks in a row they've won or 11 now? Some, I mean, some crazy number. And so, you know, you want to you want to lose because at some point it's going to happen. You can't just keep winning. Who would have thought that uh, losing their undefeated season would turn out to be the best part of the week for the Indianapolis Colts and Tony Dungy. Moffitt hit as he delivers a floater intended for Marshall. Nevada blitzing Jamal Jackson that time and forcing the incompletion. Our Nikon game track through one quarter and change. Offense dominated and the running game dominated for UCF. They only threw three passes. Smith with eight for 117, including a 78-yard touchdown, the second longest run in school history. This team, UCF, well, who was it against? Louisiana Lafayette, they ran nine straight plays, the same playoff right tackle in the game, right? So if they find something that's working, don't get away from it. Prater, who was at a 47-yarder on for a 40-yarder. And he hooked this one all the way. Boy, how could he look so overpowering on the 47-yarder and then duck hook this one? Easy, just like our golf game. I can hit you one about 330 down the middle. The next one will go 340 hard left. Still 340, though. <laughs> That's I'll the way I look that. at it. I like that, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give you something when I swing. <laughs> well, that was not wind affected at all and Prater who is 14 of 22 for the year coming in needed four field goals to get to the school record of 50 for his career so one out of two still 17 7 and the Wolfpack take over at their 24 they come out in the pistol the innovation of head coach Chris Alt this year and Jeff Rowe swinging this one out for flowers neutral breaking two tackles 6-3, back up over 200 pounds as Susie Schuster recounted. His battle with Crohn's disease cost him weight all the way down to about 176. Never said a word to his coaches because he didn't want to lose playing time. And, and watch the trajectory of this pass. Look at the, 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 it's almost a little lateral, right? Ball comes in the front, so it's not a lateral there. That's a forward pass, but a nice job of running and use, using your shoulder pads to block off the uh, defenders. They play fake. Whoa. Gives some room and keeps for about eight yards. Chris Nelson and Chris Welsh finally recognizing Rowe still had it. 
Mm. Pretty good ball pressed to digitation. Mm. And the uh, defender down for UCF. But this is so good of execution by Rowe. It, it, if the tight end is covered, you got to get up the field and run the football. It's either a throw immediately or you're running the football. And, and don't dilly-dally around with it, you know. And that's what Rowe did. He made his decision, gets up for nine yards. Well, as a matter of fact, there are two defenders down injured. One helped up, Prisoner Nelson. And we'll take a break with 1242 and a half. The Sheraton Hawaii Bowl. In the second quarter of Aloha Stadium, 17-7 for the Golden Knights. Prisoner Nelson is up, and so was the other injured defender, Chris Welsh. Craig, we said at the outset it would be impossible for both these teams not to approach this game as just happy to be here, and that's usually a bad sign for bowl teams, but they're not playing that way. No, springboard game for both these institutions. They've come into this ball game with a purpose, and that is to play hard and to show the nation, and especially recruits, that they've got something special going on here. Both these head coaches are using this game as a, a platform to vault into the recruiting as this last month or so goes on. Second down and two for the Wolfpack at their 46. Mitchell for the first down right to midfield. The senior from Loomis, California. Wax leading rusher at 111 yards per game. Brought down by Keith Shalligan, the defensive tackle. Fullback a little slow getting up. No, Charles okay. Manu, I think. Weak side guard it is, number 75. Mm. What's impressive about Chris Alt, Craig, is that at age 59, eight times a grandfather, in his 21st year, in his third stint of coaching, he's still looking for innovation. He's still curious enough, with an active enough mind, to be looking for any new wrinkle, and thus the pistol was born. And as the year went on, he was starting to get inquiries from other coaches around the country. Hey, what is that? How are you guys working that? And when Ralph Friedgen at Maryland shows some interest, then you, you know you've really got something working. And, and you know what? You also, you talk about the culture. I see a, a number of schools where their head coaches are guys who played at that school, and they go back. And I really believe that in today's climate, you need loyalty from your head coach. And what better way to get it than from a player, a former player? Manu helped off. Wolfpack first down midfield. Down by 10, early second quarter. Here's the pistol, half a shotgun. Blocking the defense's view of the tailback, Robert Hubbard. Who is chased by Neal, who grabs it at the one. 49 yards for Hubbard. John L. Neal prevents the touchdown. Yeah, the old pistol, they, they had a little gunpowder in there that time here. Now watch the guards. The guards are able to get leverage on the inside out right there. You see the leverage? You see the bodies? That's what UCF's offensive line was doing. Old Mother Hubbard hits a hole pretty good there, didn't he? You going to call him Old Mother Hubbard? The young Mother to Hubbard. To his face. First and goal from the one. Hubbard who had 146 and three scores against Fresno. Together with Mitchell, 131 yards on 10 carries. First and goal, Wolfpack. Chance to cut it to three. Mitchell, back in, touchdown. Remember that third and one while ago that they didn't convert? And Mitchell tried to jump outside. That's what you got to do on third and one. Well, that left guard, the left guard tied in. They get up in the hole. That's power football. Mitchell running right up the legs of the second tight end to 88, Adam Bishop that time, and a five-play, 77-yard scoring drive. Red Jekyll on now to make it 17-14. Redshirt freshman from Las Vegas. Out of the hole to Travis Moore is good. So after trailing 14-0 back on their heels, Nevada comes roaring back.
ESPN College Football, the Sheraton Hawaii Bowl, is brought to you by Aflac. Ask about it at work. And ELO. For home, auto, or equity loans, go to eLoan.com. ELO. Radically simple. Craig James Caddy clearing space after one of those 340 yard drives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then I use those poles to do a little, little uh, perch fishing. 17 14 <laughs> after the BJ Mitchell touchdown. Just about to hear from Susie Schuster about the condition of uh, Frisner Nelson and Chris Welsh, injured on the same play moments ago for UCF. Returnable for Curtis Francis, but not for much. Only out to the 18-yard line. Down to Susie. Well, Dave, Chris Welch, the junior linebacker, just went into the locker room with an injury to his right AC. They're going to do x-rays on that one. As for senior defensive tackle, Prisoner Nelson, he tweaked his left knee. The trainers performed some ACL tests on it. He reminded them that he tweaked that same knee in the South Florida game. He's got a new brace on it, and he's ready to go back into the game. Well, enough tweaks. And pretty soon you're talking about not just a bothersome knee but an injured knee hopefully not to that point every tweak is an injured knee it's just a matter of to what level of tweak Moffitt first down for the 18 14 point lead chopped to three looking deep and broken up by Joe Garcia incomplete for a moment it looked like a touchdown for Willie Thornton Pretty nice play there by Garcia going to the ball in the air, making the adjustment. Played the ball a lot better than the receiver did, didn't he? Four picks. Whack leader. Long Beach Community College transfer. Nice surprise. Junior from Westminster, California. For a moment, looked like an 82 yard touchdown. Moffitt's pass. Is incomplete, almost brought in that time by Sergio Hakim and Garcia again there to make the play. As usual, Roderick Stallings in the neighborhood too. Well, you notice that Nevada football team starting to do a little bit more swagger walking, huh? Coming up, making a pop, and they've got to do that. Uh, UCF is a very physical, fast football team. They've showed that in the first quarter. And you just can't allow defensively for UCF, UCF's receivers or ball handlers to have any kind of momentum when they turn up the field. Good break up today for the first team all whack corner Garcia sets up third and ten. Again, UCF without their leading receiver today, Mike Walker tore up a knee against Rice in the final game of the regular season. Here's Brandon Marshall. More than ever, Mark Mann today without Walker, and Marshall breaks tackles all the way to the 33 and has a first down. 15 yards for Marshall. And, and this really is a result of, of Nevada's defense inside. You're going to see the linebackers. You're going to see everybody coming. If you're going to come, you better get there. Otherwise, you're going to have players running free down the field. So it's a gamble that didn't pay off by Nevada. And an excellent job of Moffitt finding his receiver coming across the field. Big first half, which includes a 51-yard touchdown catch to get UCF on the board here. Whistles and flags before the snap. This would be UCS first penalty. Prior to the snap, false start on the offense. Number 88, five yard penalty. Repeat, first down. And it's on Sergio Hakeem. <laughs> Two veteran disciplinarian coaches, and it really shows up in the fact that they don't commit many penalties, certainly not very many dumb penalties. And, and Coach O'Leary said, you know, he doesn't holler a whole lot, but I've got that look. And, you know, when they, when they see me give them that look, uh, you better be ready. On first and 15. Again, Nevada's run defense shredded in the first quarter showing up. And uh, bringing down Jason Peters. Susie, we also saw a couple of uh, Nevada players down injured. What's their update? We did indeed. Charles Mann of the O lineman left ankle. He's taped up. They're going to run him on the sidelines to see how he can respond. As for Sergio Villasenor, the DB, he's got a concussion and he won't be back. Well, that's a loss. They're starting free safety. 
No longer available. Second down to 12. Golden Knights, the 31 yard line. Moffitt blitz. Gets away. Matt Hines had a shot at him and he throws it incomplete. A great escape. Lots of times incompletions are the best play possible and Moffitt last year might not have made that play. Might have tried to force something that wasn't there. Not this year. And the same defense. You see the linebackers again. Watch what these linebackers are doing inside. There was the big play down the field on the previous blitz that they came with those linebackers inside. This time Moffitt avoids, but he's forced to change the rhythm. The rhythm was disrupted, and it worked for the defense. Moffitt's teammates uh, just gushing about his improvement last year to this year. We asked him about it. Say, well, you know, what I discovered is once you learn the system and figure out how to read the defense, everything's a lot easier. That was a light bulb moment. Pressure has him here. On the blitz, it's Scott Garrison. But a marker down back at the line of scrimmage. Garrison who backs up Roosevelt Cooks at weak side linebacker for Nevada. There is no foul on the play for an eligible downfield. Fourth down. You know, this is the third time in this series the defense has done what they have. They're going to have a little work here. They're trying to work where they can get a linebacker free in the inside and have confusion. Left guard came over and picked up, opened up the other side, the offside linebacker coming around on the loop. Aaron Horn on to punt. One thing the Wolfpack defense has done well all year. Opponents have only made 35% of their third downs. This is a shank, and Nevada is going to take over with fantastic field position. Born a walk-on transfer from Florida International where he did not play football. Had had a good year. He averaged 42 and a half per kick. That one goes 14. You know what? That's a pretty good deal here. You know, you see the, you know, uh, the throw it in the bucket and you get something. Here's the, here's the duck quack. This goes in the trash can right behind the Nevada bench and they all get excited. I mean, a boom. That's a bucket. <laughs> bench got all fired up. Nevada players are really tight about this thing. They should be fired up. They take over at the 35, trailing by just three. 9.22 in the second quarter. Down early, 14 nothing. Back from the pack. Another nicely executed take and scramble by Rowe. And Jeff Rowe, who had rushed for five touchdowns this year, nearly 200 yards coming in, picks up eight. Run out by James Cook. This pistol offense, as a defensive coordinator, you, you, you basically you sit there and you tell your guys, hey, fellas, you know, it looks one way, and, it, you know, it's one of those deals where if it walks like one and it quacks like one, it probably is one. Let the ball snap. Follow the guards, and they're going to take you to the play. And so the guards in this game for Nevada's offense, at least in the minds of UCF, is kind of a key for them. Charles Manu is still out. On second down to two. Mitchell to the secondary. First down inside the 20 down to Susie. Well, guys, you were just talking about the D coordinator. Well, Lance Thompson, the Golden Knights D coordinator, just told me that he's got a bunch of freshmen who are scared of the long run, a linebacker who's scared of the long run, scared to death out there. He said, but we're seeing adjustments we can make to the pistol. They're starting in the dock, which means they're spreading their tight ends instead of putting them together in motion. So look for them to make some changes there on the defense. So young. The secondary, just, just for example, the secondary has a freshman and three redshirt freshmen who started today. Only 10 seniors, half of whom see significant action as we again get a flag prior to the snap. Twenty five freshmen and sophomores less than half Offside. as many seniors on the defense. Number ninety nine five yard penalty first down Kareem Reed. You, you saw that look of Coach O'Leary's face just a couple of series after the punt, you know, like he'd swallowed a lemon, chewed on one. That 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 was the look of, oh, Mo, momentum has gone to the other sideline, and now you're seeing a Nevada team that's executing under control. First quarter, most of it anyway. Golden Knights did about anything they wanted. Now, we're going to get thrown right back in their faces. Caleb Spencer. 
First down, goal to go, Wolfpack. James Cook on the tackle of Spencer, the Honolulu native who had to come up somehow or another with 170 tickets. That's just for his family to this game. <laughs> I call it on Tuesday night, there was a luau, and I call Spencer Mr. Luau. He got called up and was dancing and had the girls up there shaking it fast, and he tried to go fast. Lucky he didn't pull a back muscle trying to keep up with that. Somehow I think that was not his first luau. <laughs> He's figured out how to survive those. He's got him set up first and goal at the eight. Mitchell down to the two. Written down hard by Corey Hogue. Yet another freshman who started today's game defensively for UCF out of Naples, Florida. He was the only freshman who started the season over against South Carolina. Lots of his classmates joined him as the year went on. Yeah, this was one of those examples of, of guards taking you to the hole, to the play. And, and number eight's down the hill. Uh, and the bowling ball with feet getting it going now. Second and goal, one yard line. Nevada poised to take its first lead of the Sheraton Hawaii Bowl. And again, B.J. Mitchell. Left drive, keeps the pile moving. He's in. Touchdown, Wolfpack in front. His second touchdown today. They take it 35 yards after the shank punt, and they go on top 20 to 17. You know what? Uh, it's 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 interesting when you listen to the to this runner talk. He, you know, Mitchell says, "I'm not real fast, and I hope I can make it in the NFL." And he's talking about speed. Take with that. You are what you are. Be good at what you are, which is running with power behind your blockers. Fred Jacob. Just does squeeze that inside the right upright. DJ Mitchell with his second touchdown as our bowl road trip brings us to Christmas Eve in Honolulu, 21 17, Nevada. Aloha and welcome to the 2005 Sheraton Hawaii Bowl. On behalf of the Sheraton brand and our parent company, Starwood Hotels and Resorts. I would like to say mahalo for joining us in paradise to support these incredible athletes from UCF and Nevada. During the game, banish your thoughts of the cold winter and transport yourself here to the islands of Aloha, where summer awaits you year round. We invite you to stay in one of our beautiful Sheraton hotels on Oahu, Maui, Kauai, and the Big Island of Hawaii. This is where you want to be. Happy holidays and please enjoy the game. Boy, even for Hawaii, this week has just produced spectacular weather. I've never been here for so long, Craig, where you could see all the mountains. There were never any no cloud cover, definitely no rain, just nothing but sparkling water and clear blue skies and 75, 76 degrees every single day for both these schools. And for you and me, a couple of Texas guys, what a week. Heaven. High short kick. And uh, from the 28-yard line, Peters takes it for UCF. Let's check in down with Susie. Well, Craig, you were talking about how B.J. Mitchell has to be himself. We talked about the fact that Ronnie Brown and Carnell Williams out of Auburn last year were two very different backs. He feels like he's a hybrid of the two of them together. If you ask him what his speed is, by the way, he'll tell you he runs a forever. He knows he's <laughs> slow. He's working on his speed before the combine happens. He knows this game, though, is a great way to get people to get some attention to him. And by the way, B.J. doesn't stand for anything. It's Big John. <laughs> <laughs> Forever. I'm not buying that. He's 11 carries, 90 yards, two touchdowns. Wolfpack on top. UCF coming from behind for the first time as Moffitt rolls and fires, and it's broken up. Marshall had his hand on it, couldn't hang on. How many times have we seen the Nevada secondary come up now and and put a helmet? on the receiver right as the ball arrives. You know, this again, this is a defense and a team that doesn't pride itself on having a whole lot of, what, 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 what did Susie just say, four evers on their 40s and all, but they play the game hard and fast. And, and for UCF, hey, Coach O'Leary said to us in the meeting, let's don't abandon the run too soon. Just keep pounding up there. Let's see if Nevada can stop you throughout the four quarters. Well, D'Angelo Wilson has uh, at least temporarily put Brandon Marshall out of the game. As Kevin Smith 
is dragged down at the line of scrimmage by Joshua Maga, freshman linebacker from Fallon, Nevada. Now, here's what I'm talking about. You know, some big plays going to the ball, being there just in time, making the sticks as the receivers get there. The adjustment with the linebackers coming on the inside in the last series, they make the sack and end the series. So the N N Nevada defense has, has stepped up for sure in the second quarter. Just a really per perceptive momentum switch after UCF raced out to a 14-0 lead. Now on third and nine again, Moffitt pressured. Gets rid of it. What a shot. Roosevelt cuts, throws down on Kevin Smith. Mercy. Happy holidays. Hopefully Kevin Smith's going to be awake for New Year's. Wow. Now, you know what? Cooks delivers a blow here that stops a play. All right. There, there's one thing that happens here. I mean, he comes up and Coach just lays the wood. Boom. But I tell you what it did. It inspired the other 70 guys standing on that sideline over there. Those were the guys in the blue jerseys going crazy. Horn after a 14-yard shank set up a 35-yard touchdown drive. Sends that one deep to Alex Rosenblum, a 50-yarder. Look at this again. You know, and, and this is just a matter of, of, of seeing the game now. Right now, Nevada's defense is seeing the offense. They figured it out. And I'm telling you, that sidelines erupted when he hit that ball carrier. Roosevelt Cooks, who won the Blackout Award, they hand out for the most big hits for the season. Any run, uh, anyone wondering why anymore after what we've seen from him? So a uh, quick UCF possession in which Marshall limps off and Kevin Smith, the Conference USA Freshman of the Year, is blasted to the turf by Cooks. Row back to work. Catch and run Flowers in a foot race. Nietzsche and Flowers caught at the 30. As John L. Neal prevents a touchdown. 54 yards. Sometimes, you, you know, coaches just call the right plays. But I want to show you how on the outside, you've got blocking happening. You've got execution. The players at Nevada, they've slowed this thing down mentally. You know, the, you, you hear players talk about being in the zone. You know, coaches are in the zone right now for Nevada. Every call turns to goal. Flowers, who was so deep in Chris Holt's doghouse at the beginning of the season, he did not play in the season opener against Washington State. They were trying to make him a senior leader. They said, turn all this personality you have toward your teammates. Make them better. You know, on the right hard earned side. lesson. Yeah, right side, the right guard, right tackle. They're here, you've got a guard lineman coming out. I mean, there's just a lot of people working, doing their jobs the right way. Close to a big touchdown as uh, the timeout called by UCF with 5.46 to go, trailing 21 17. Our AFLAC trivia question Name the two teams that played the first ever Division 1A overtime game. And for this one, I'm going to give you a hint. It was not in the regular season when that rule took effect in 1996. So it would have happened in 1995. And I, 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 I'm going to go with Nevada being one of the one of the teams. You know, I'm just guessing. But so you're guessing that such a random question might possibly have something to do with one of the teams here. Well, there were random tests that I partook in at SMU, and, <laughs> and I had to have <laughs> those went well for you. So you, know, you stuck with those it. Those kind of multiple thoughts had to come into play. I think you're on to something here. <laughs> After the timeout, first and ten, UCF defense on their heels. After Rhoda Flowers goes for 54 yards. Back to the ground game now, and it's Robert Hubbard who has combined with B.J. Mitchell to do what the pistol offense was designed to do, hide the tailback behind the 6'5 quarterback and let him operate north-south. All right, Dave, so right now your defense, your team's reeling. Uh, Nevada's on a roll. 
Who do you look towards now? You got to find a senior on defense. Let's go to Paul Carrington. Big fellow on the defensive line. Got to make a play up there. You know, he's a leader. He's a senior. Got a lot of freshmen around him. Number 95 defensive end. Second down at six. It's Hubbard. And it's Hubbard with the nose for the goal line. Got there. Touchdown. Robert Hubbard takes it 24 yards. He's carried it five times for 85 yards, and it's a 10-point Wolfpack lead. All right, so what does Nevada do? They run right at the old senior. 95 couldn't hold his ground, and Miss Hubbard hits the hole hard. Old Mother Hubbard, I, I, you know, guy can run. He's not an old Mother Hubbard, so what are we going to call this guy? Huh? <laughs> how about one of the up, watch your mind? How about one of the best backup tailbacks in the country? Barnett, your mind is working. It's terrible. Christmas Eve. You better watch it. <laughs> Christmas Eve. Three plays, 82 yards, 28-17. <laughs> At the University of Central Florida, opportunity abounds for high ability, high energy students, for faculty to transform the next generation, for researchers to discover and redefine the world, for our community's quality of life. Opportunity is what fills the world with hope and puts the horizon within reach. UCF stands for opportunity. I drive rovers on Mars for NASA. I lead the world's top engineers preparing bridges for earthquakes. I do research for the Air Force. I created a nonprofit program for women in Uganda. I work with the United Nations. I am a University of Nevada professor. I am a University of Nevada professor. Teacher. Motivator. Explorer. University of Nevada, Reno. Global perspective, practical learning. Let's do Susie's thing with it. Well, as soon as I say we've not seen any clouds covering any mountains, sure enough, there they show up. A 28-17 Nevada, 5-01 second quarter. This is a 28-3 spurt that they've put together after it early on looked like it might be UCF in a walkaway. Mm. They've taken advantage of uh, a short field, 35 yards for their next to last score. This time they drive at 80 plus. And the special teams are there at the 22 to end the return by Jason Vincent. Let's check in uh, on the mental status of a red hot Jeff Rowe with Susie. Well, guys, you know, sometimes Jeff Rowe tells me he can get tight. And after he injured his shoulder in 2003, he had time to step back and see that he needed to calm down. He's not just calm now. He is darn right loopy. He told me before the game that he was tired. He was hooping and hollering like a circus clown down here, guys. I, I think he's awake. <laughs> Much like my partner. <laughs> That's all right. He and I ate off the same buffet line. <laughs> now Ken Moffat and the Golden Knights get something going offensively. As Kevin Smith recovers from that uh, blast he took on the last series by Roosevelt Cooks. He's brought down here by Roderick Stallings. I get, I'm going to go back to what, what I was trying to get a point across with Paul Carrington and that defense. There are a lot of young football players on this UCF team. And so when you're facing adversity and it's a 28 to 3 run by the opponent, who can step up? Who can you depend on? I mean, you got to you got to suck it up and go out and play hard. It's not coming in nearly as large chunks as they were in the first quarter, in which UCF had 214 total yards. Here's a strike. And to the 39-yard line, it's Brandon Marshall for 15 yards. Marshall, who was briefly knocked out of the game on the previous series, right back to work. Steve Moffitt is the guy on offense, and he was coming into this game, but he's more so now for the football team. When the team's down, quarterback has to step up and make plays and and the, the running game they've lost their their swagger with the run right now Nevada's done some things up front that have taken a little guesswork into the minds of UCF's offensive line the 67 yards for UCF in the second quarter as Smith looks to turn the corner there's Roosevelt cooks again in his final game for the Wolfpack the senior from Yosemite California second team all whack easily the defensive player 
for either team that's shown up the biggest so far. I guarantee you that Cooks would tell us after the game that the difference in the first quarter and the second quarter is the fact that he figured out there's a lot more speed in Kevin Smith than he thought. And he's having to play at different angles now to get to the ball carrier. Seems to have figured it out just fine. Second down and seven. Type run to the first quarter for Smith probably goes 20 yards. This time he said it's for three. In the one back, fake was to Smith. Moffitt rolling. And Rocky Ross brings it in inbounds at the 44 of Nevada. First down. How bad Moffitt. Oh, what a throw. Nice job, too, with a play call. Got an aggressive up front Nevada defense. Does he get the ball? Yeah, that's it. Good job. Nice execution. Ross starting for the uh, injured. Leading receiver on the team, Mike Walker. Ross, the third receiver most of the year for George O'Leary. One of their freshmen out of Jacksonville. He's got him at the 44 where the toss goes to Smith and he cuts it upfield. And that's how things went for the first quarter for the Golden Knights of UCF. Smith rolling all the way to the 27 where Corey Fagan brings him down after 17 yards. You know this is this is an unbalanced look to the left side a lot of power and you're going to see two tight ends over here they're just off the line of scrimmage there are you three I mean this is a power smash mouth formation get on bodies and get up in the line of scrimmage and then and then the running by Smith of keeping his legs going and this is answering the call right here that has to be answered by UCF. UCF in desperate need of the drive. They've got that. Now can they finish it? As it's Smith inside the 25. What was interesting talking to these guys yesterday was what they got out of going 0 and 11 last year. And one of the things Brandon Mitt Marshall said they got was paradoxically they learned how to finish because midseason it was obvious they had nothing to play for, but they still had to finish out the year and try to get something out of it. So what they brought into this year which they're eight and four is they learned how to finish an assignment last year finish a play finish a series finish a game finish the season in which they didn't win a single game Moffitt to the end zone incomplete intended for his tight end Darcy Johnson who asks for a flag and gets none it'll be third and five. Johnson, a graduate student in criminal justice, one of the very few Joe Leary has with a lot of experience. Three-year starter. Yeah, he's got. They got to get him in the game. Johnson has to make some catches. This is a big player, big-time athlete. Moffitt is, has done a heck of a job here, right before the half ends, of getting his team down. And, and this third down, I mean, you know, number nine. If they can get him, number nine is the guy or six. Brandon Marshall. If they can get him one-on-one. -on -one. He's bottom of your screen wide right goes over the middle calls for it gets it uncovered. What a gaping hole in the zone it appeared Marshall stepped into and he's got the first out of the 16. How do you lose track of him. It's 6 4 2 30. Now, and that's the confidence that Moffitt has in Marshall. He's looking for Marshall whether he's right left if he's doubled up singled up he's trying to find him to make the big play. Brandon five catches 98 yards. Moffitt now seven out of 14 for 114 a 51 yard touchdown to Marshall to get the scoring started. Straight drop well protected to the back of the end zone and incomplete. Clock stops with a minute 16 and a half. UCF in its first bowl ever. School's second trip ever to Hawaii. They lost 45 14 here against the University of Hawaii in Dante Culpepper's freshman year back in 1995. Culpepper with George O'Leary. Of course, in Minnesota, where O'Leary was defensive coordinator. When Culpepper found out O'Leary was talking to his alma mater, he immediately volunteered to orchestrate the whole deal. He said, I'm Mr. UCF. You got to talk to me. He said, I think I've got it under control. Ooh, Smith tracked down. Lost to the 21. Corey Fagan again with the hit. 
A loss of five for Smith. Boy, number 50, you're right. Number 50, backside took away half the football field with his effort getting down the line of scrimmage. A UCF timeout. Their second with a minute eight. You know, if I had to highlight this first half, I'd say that it was a UCF team that just came out and dominated early, and they've got to learn how to handle success. And now you got to come back and re-answer the call. Uh, let's see if you knew what you're talking about here. Aflac trivia question. Two teams have played the first ever Division I-A overtime game. Yes, you nailed it. Toledo yes. beat Nevada yes. in the 95 yes. Las Vegas Bowl. It was, uh, at that point, just an experimental rule that became for the uh, 96 regular season. The rule that has really transformed college football. Washon Tate, 26 yards for Toledo. Followed up by a one-yard score for Miner, Nevada. And then Tate uh, again, two yards out in overtime for the win, 40 to 37. So while UCF has had to learn a lesson here about jumping out early and, and, and sticking with the focus and the intensity. And I've had Coach Alt. That's a football team that showed character down huge. I mean, you look like it. Yep. They on the mat yep. counted out early. They weren't winless last year. They were five and seven, and Alt had to get rid of 14 players who had had uh, run-ins with the criminal justice system in Reno, and they weren't just casual brushes with the law. They were guys that he figured early on he had to eliminate from the program. They had any hope of instilling the type of discipline and system that has brought them here to Honolulu. Here's third and 15 for Moffitt. And to the end zone with a man open, broken up. Again, the Wolfpack defensive backfield comes away with the deflection. Wilson back there along with Shannon Savour. It just is a, it, it, it's really enlightening to see the way this secondary plays and goes to the ball. They're linebackers, they're secondary, they're beat, but they go right back to the play. Savor gets most of the credit there to knock that one out of the hands of Marshall. Hard for Moffitt to throw it much better than that. So here comes Prater, who nailed a 47-yarder, hit it in a 60-yarder, and a duck hook to 40-yarder. This will be from 38. And much better contact this time. That looked like the first Matt Prater field goal. He's made it 28-20 with 56 seconds to go in the half. Well, Kim McLeod's the defensive back coach for Nevada, who I believe played here in Hawaii. And his, his unit's done a nice job of making some adjustments. 28-20. How about uh, close-fought offensive first half? Nevada total yardage 331. UCF 321. Rushing. Wolfpack 206 UCF on the ground 207 and 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 after about five six minutes that first quarter if you'd have told me it was going to be like this right now I'd have said no way UCF was dominating up front I just don't think Nevada they weren't ready for that speed and they made the adjustment 14 nothing down and they ran off uh, 28 of the next 31 points in the game. Eight points. Wolfpack lead. Almost a minute still to go in the half. UCF, 11 play, 57 yard drive. And a little over four minutes to get the Crater 38 yard field goal. have been excellent and again Hubbard has to settle for the touchback coming up here on ESPN the college football halftime report with Reese Davis he'll give you the NFL news of the day Seattle clinches home field advantage throughout the NFC playoffs the Redskins have a costly win over the Giants and Memphis's main Tigers they prepare for Monday's Motor City Bowl Reese Davis coming up momentarily As his catamaran comes in, and he can race to the camera. Mm. First and ten for Jeff Rowe, the lately unstoppable Nevada offense. Draw play for Mitchell. This will get him over 100 yards. 
with that cutback in the second effort. 12 yards to give him 102 for the first half. Another tackle in the secondary by John L. Neal. And, and you know, having a big play like that on first down, uh, you know, maybe you rethink a little bit what your plan would be going in if you try to get down the field. Two timeouts still for Nevada. And Rowe with the deep out and the sliding grab for Spencer. At the 48. Talk about an NFL throw. And an NFL reception. Spencer kept working his way back. Man, I want you to watch 87, how he comes back up the sideline. Watch 87 come back, young receivers. Come back and get the football. Lock rolling. 30 seconds from their 48. They run Hubbard from a wide out spot and bring him back inside. And with a bubble screen look, he's to the 46, brought down by Sharif Rashad. And the Wolfpack will use their second timeout with 18 seconds. Sunday night, that would be tomorrow, Christmas night. Brad Johnson and the Vikings try to continue their late season surge and playoff push. They visit Ed Reed and the Baltimore Ravens. Coverage begins at 7.30 Eastern with NFL Primetime, presented by Miller Lite. Vikings Ravens also available in sparkling high definition on ESPN HD. Christmas night special from Baltimore. Where Diamond Head is just a distant wish. Look at that. It's looked like that. Not for us. Crystal clear all week. Well, we're here. What do you mean a distant wish? Isn't it fun to rub it in every now and then? I just, just wipe people's it. faces in it <laughs> shamelessly. Man. What a what a view right out our window. Two teams staying just down Waikiki Beach from that magnificent view. Two conference commissioners here this week: Carl Benson with the WAC, Britton Banowski, Conference USA. They had a great time. I mean, it just, it, this this is a really, really neat bowl game for schools. I mean, to tell you, I, and I've said this, if, if you're not playing in the Rose Bowl for the national championship, this is the bowl. Why would you want to be anywhere else? Jim Donovan, certain Hawaii Bowl executive director, Pete Burzis and their staff. Outstanding posts. Rowe staggering around as he scrambles, broken play, big block, lots of room, and he throws beyond the line of scrimmage. No touchdown. Caleb Spencer will not have a touchdown because Rowe is a good two yards beyond the line. <laughs> Look at Rowe. Y'all come on back. Legal forward pass on the offense number three. Quarterback was beyond the line of scrimmage when he threw the pass. It'll be a five yard penalty in the spot. Loss of down, third down. I tell you what, you know what? When, when, you, when, you, when you talk about wearing out a defense, I mean, th this kind of basketball savviness in the pocket, buying time, he passes it right. Right, he was over it. I, clearly, he's beyond it, and so and Jeff Rowe knew that. But I, hey, I, you know what? It's not six points, but it's another message of what you can do in this game. Boy, too bad because that's uh, that's every offense's last play of the half. Dream. The receiver is open, as Spencer turned out to be. They run the draw play for Hubbard. And that will end the first half. So Nevada that close, just two yards beyond the line of scrimmage, or else it would be 35-20 after Georgia O'Leary and UCF led their first ever bowl game 14 to nothing. The Wolfpack took total control. 28-20, Reese Davis coming up from the studio. All right, Dave, thank you very much. Last year in the Hawaii Bowl, Sheraton Hawaii Bowl, we had a grand total of 99 points scored between Hawaii and UAB. Just about on track for that, so Santa won't have to deliver any points to Hawaii. We've got plenty right now between Nevada and UCF. On this Christmas Eve in Honolulu, 28-20, Nevada leading Central Florida as we prepare to start the second half. 
Again, again, Merry Christmas from uh, Dave Barnett, Craig James, Susie Schuster. And I don't think it's overstating anything to call that a spectacular first half. And on both sides of the ball, four plays of more, more than 50 yards, one of 49 on the offensive side, and major hits on the defensive side. Now it comes into adjustments. You know, we, we, we saw Nevada. They went out and made some adjustments defensively to slow down UCF and that running game. Man, I mean, UCF was smoking them early on. They made some adjustments. Now you see it, UCF, in my opinion, they have to look for leadership. This is a young football team. George O'Leary has to go and find his seniors and really pin them down and say, guys, you got to make some plays. Well, UCF up 14, down 11 after 21 unanswered points in the second quarter by the Wolfpack. Late field goal cut at 28-20. They have to give Nevada the ball to begin the second half. As Prater kicks, Hubbard finally with a chance to return this one from the goal line, only out to the 16 and a flag down. Our game track, fourth play of the game. Moffitt to Brandon Marshall, 51 yards, a juggling first touchdown for UCF. And then 21 straight in the second quarter. Two touchdown runs by B.J. Mitchell, Wax Offensive Player of the Year. Robert Hubbard into the act as well. Combined total of 260 rush yards, 363 total yards by the Wolfpack. And O'Leary's UCF offense, 321 total yards. Well, you remember the last series before half, Jeff Rowe had the launch to the end zone after a great scramble. He threw it beyond the line of scrimmage, so the touchdown was, was uh, nullified. But I think that signal to this defense was sent, and the message was we can score, we can move around. Now they've got him wondering where they're going to have containment. Illegal block pushes it back to the eight. First down. Hubbard starts the second half. Picks up three. Let's check in with Susie Schuster. Craig, Craig, he just launched again, Jeff Rowe. He launched right into a garbage pail. He just lost his halftime snack straight into a garbage pail. He says that he throws up every single halftime, but uh, that's one of the scariest observations I've ever seen on the sideline. Wow. Well, you know what? He's just an exciting young man. He, he, he knows there's plenty of food around here. He can go replenish later. Exciting, excitable. And he took a knee, assuming I think UCF is going to be called for offsides here. Mm -hmm. oh, Offside on the defense, number 99. Five yard penalty. Second down. Kareem Reed, defensive end. Well, and <clears throat> when you talk about Kareem Reed, he's a junior, and and guys, they, you know, you got to see the snaps, need the ball, don't listen. But an excellent job of Jeff Rowe of changing that cadence. He's got to play the game, man. He's got to be a poised leader out there. Three receiver set. On second down and one, roll, rolling hit Spencer. And Spencer driven down by John L. Neal, who continues to rack up the tackles. At left cornerback, the redshirt freshman from Baton Rouge. Don't you get the, and really it's gone now for a quarter, where Nevada's offense has had such a nice rhythm, a, a practice rhythm. You know, and, and uh, they're getting their blocks up front. They're protecting the quarterback, receivers at the routes. Uh, you know, at this point here, UCF's defense is just kind of out there. Well, it's interesting. Their coordinator, Lance Thompson, said this is just a base offense that looks like a gadget offense, but really isn't. It really just uh, enables them to play the hard-nosed north-south running game they want to specialize in as Hubbard carries to the 30. And, and again, we want to make sure everybody understands there are a lot of young football players on this defensive side right now. UCF is having to deal calling plays, maybe some of the plays that the court defensive coordinator wouldn't want to call, but he's having to just to be simple. Now, both sides of the ball, the inexperience causing UCF to keep things very elementary this year. Mitchell is swarm. This is going to lose two back to the 28. We're going to track some of the 
remarkable developments offensively in the history of football leading to this pistol as you look at the remarkable lack of experience Lance Thompson of UCS, UCF's defense has had to overcome five freshmen only six juniors and seniors combined and yet from 0 and 11 last year for the postseason this year. Rowe forced to scramble and is dragged down well shy of the first of the 31 by Emeka Okamore. Another Baton Rouge product. Lance Thompson, the LSU assistant head coach, 2002 and 2003, helped them out in their national championship season. Boy, what a great job there by UCF's defense of realizing, again, realizing that Jeff Rowe can run. And, and, and so those defensive linemen, you can't be so concerned about pinning your ears back and getting to the pocket seven yards deep. You better find out where he is. And if Rowe's going to leave, you better find him. So they come up with a stop they needed, and Justin Bergendahl looks off a pretty good kick. Joe Burnett signaled for the fair catch. He let it bounce. And they mark it out at the 25. Early third quarter, Wolf Pack 28 20 in the Sheraton Hawaii Bowl. We're on Oahu. Live at uh, Ford Island, USS Arizona Memorial. That part of your picture there. At Pearl Harbor, we are nearby at Aloha Stadium. UCF first and 10 to 25 yard line. Back to the ground game. Kevin Smith, who had a spectacular first quarter and has been a marked man ever since. He's at 17 carries, 145 yards, and a touchdown at halftime. But Craig, most of that in the first quarter, and Nevada adjusted big time. And I think he was the one who was uh, probably affected by those adjustments most of any UCF offensive player in the second quarter. I, I, I thoroughly believe that Nevada's defense. They changed their angles and or attitude about the pursuit. They got to get to the ball quickly, and they've done that. And it just won. Play fake pressure. Moffitt gets it off, and a one-handed grab. Wow. Brought in by Darcy Johnson, the tight end. Well, the first pass Moffitt threw was a one-handed 51-yard touchdown grab by Brandon Marshall. and. First of the second half, not quite as productive, but almost as impressive. Oh, from the left, coming across to the right, Darcy Johnson, what a big pick-me-up play right there for UCF. A big pick-me-up play. Extra! UCF looking to recharge their offense. It's good about anything it wanted in the first quarter. First down. Back to Smith on the ground, back down to Susie Schuster. Well, Craig was talking about that look that George O'Leary gives. I think he gave that look to Tim Salem, the offensive coordinator, because he says, I want to go back to running the game. He really lets his coordinators coach the game, but at the half, he went to him and said, what are you doing? Put the ball back on the ground. They said yesterday about 22 pass attempts would be a good target. Moffitt's already at 17, 8 for 17, 127 yards. They've run. More than they passed, but probably passed more than they anticipated. On the ground, it's Smith to midfield, and he picks up the first down. And Moffitt went on to say that it, when I get into that 29 or 30 pass attempts, you know, that those have been the close games. And and I think Coach O'Leary is probably just trying to say, hey, we've got to reestablish mentally an edge in this game. And because right now, they are not playing as physical as Nevada is. So when you got a back averaging nine yards per carry with 144 at the half as Smith had Smith getting a workout on this opening possession for UCF's third quarter and he's reached the Wolfpack 46 Conference USA freshman of the year second team all league went over a thousand yards on their first series basically unrecruited. From Miami after he was uh, switched from running back to free safety for his senior year of high school. And his obscurity became UCF's benefit when they snapped him up, kept him away from the likes of the Hurricanes and Gators and Seminoles and everybody else who probably would have tracked him much closer had he stayed at tailback. Mop a deep ball for Ross, broken up D'Angelo Wilson. And a late flag. As they'll apparently call Wilson for going over Rocky Ross's back. Yeah. 
Pass interference on a defense, number four. 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic, first down. Yeah, just as the ball arrives, watch the left hand on the left shoulder pad. Wilson gets it, and I mean, it's that is so close, but it's the left hand, and that's what that official was able to see back deep beyond to throw the flag. Uh, if the ball were thrown two or three steps sooner, it's a big touchdown instead of a rough in the, uh, the, the uh, receiver. Well, hasn't that been a, a recurring theme, too? Really, for both quarterbacks. Well, it's thrown a little bit too late. Smith for a couple. He's inside the 30. Brought down by Stallings and Scott Garrison. You know, two teams, they, they came into this bowl, bowl game, and their idea is this is the springboard game, which we've talked about. But you got to play four quarters. Both teams are, are pretty even, and they have to play four quarters and keep the focus and the intensity for four quarters. UCF's had their traveling shoes on all year. They had only four home games, seven road games. Moffitt. Was pressured that time by blitzing Scott Garrison in the pass at the 30 incomplete intended for Johnson. Well, this this again. Remember a few series ago in the second quarter, Nevada they started doing the run blitz with those two linebackers up the middle, and that's all that is. They're they're, they're trying to stuff the run and see if Moffitt or dare Moffitt to beat him with a pass. So far, he's really only burned him on the first pass he threw. The 51 yard touchdown to Marsh. 8 of 18, 127 yards, almost half of that total on that first attempt of the day. Here's a third and nine. And again, off pressure, gets it. Marshall breaks the tackle by Garcia, continues on to the end zone. Dragging Mike Samples the rest of the way for his second touchdown catch. UCF is back within two. And they'll try and tie it up right here. I, I, I'm just, you know, I, I'm here to tell you, Brandon Marshall is a big, strong, talented receiver. And when you get somebody as big as he is out in the flat, you know, there are not many defensive backs in college football period that can bring this guy down. He is huge. So he learned a lot that he could use this year when he returned to wide receiver from last year when they moved him because of necessity to safety and he led UCF in tackles. So the try for two to tie to 28 here. Moffitt. The throw behind his tight end, Darcy Johnson. Joe Garcia, though, right there on him. And I think even on a better pass, Garcia was in great position to make the tackle and deny the two point conversion. Still the Wolfpack by two. ESPN College Football, the Sheraton Hawaii Bowl, is brought to you by ADT. America's residential and commercial security leader. Or not your average halftime show here at the Sheraton Hawaii Bowl. It's a local talent on display, fire swallowing jugglers and the hula dancers. Local singers, all entertaining at intermission here at Aloha Stadium. Where it's 28-26. UCF denied the two-point conversion, still trailing by two. Matt Prater. Through the hands of Hubbard, and he'll have to cover it for a touchback. So the Wolfpack had momentum, had uh, come from 14-0 down to 28-17 up, and now it's UCF scoring nine straight to regain the momentum. We've talked all night about the pistol, the offensive innovation this year, Chris Holt. And uh, what we wanted to do is put it in some perspective, because this is the only school running it right now, but there are some inquiries coming from some interesting places around college football. We said one guy who's interested in learning more about it is uh, the renowned Ralph Friedgen. Coach so long with George O'Leary at Georgia Tech and with the San Diego Chargers, now the head coach at Maryland. Others are inquiring. Who knows how many schools might pick it up? 
as the years go by. So look back at some of the innovations going back, first of all, Craig, to the Army single wing of the 1940s. You know what? You got the wing on the left side, the single wing, and it, it, gave, it gave you multiple counter options. You know, you could really misdirect with it. And then you go the T formation, and this was the old Oklahoma teams back in the 50s, and you saw the power, and man, I just, you know what? People hear T and wings and this and that, and you know, so you see it, and it comes home for you. Well, that formation brought about a 47 game winning streak. Rose scrambling. Looks up field and incomplete. Mike McCoy with the diving attempt. So from the tee of the 50s, the uh, Daryl Royal innovation, this was the very first wishbone game against Houston. They tied this game, the opener of 1968. They lost the next week to Texas Tech. Then they went 30 straight. Now, how did this get in? Here? Oh, I love this. Who put this in here? This flashback of old memories here. The old eye formation. <laughs> Eric Dickerson's backup. <laughs> carrying well. Uh, Engineered uh, by Lance McElhenney. The SMUI, the 80s. In all seriousness, <laughs> I, I never saw it executed better than your early 80s team. Thank I, you. I hate to have to admit that. Thank you. As you know. Well throwing Spencer with a first down reception. So from the eye, really credited mostly to John McKay's early 60s USC team, Stanford with Bill Walsh in the 80s, showing the uh, pro set of the split backfield. And, and that is such a successful offense. If you've got two pretty darn good running backs, you can run weak side and strong side. And the single. And we uh, could use a lot of programs here. This is Michigan of the 90s. The one back set still very popular around college football. So first out 33 yard line Nevada on the move again. After the fake to Mitchell. Row again rolling right and is going to be dragged down by Stephen Baker. A walk on wide receiver. Who has only been a linebacker for a couple of weeks. But because Jordan Richards normally the starter is out today with shoulder problems Baker having to play behind Corey Hogue who started they liked so much of what they've seen from Baker at linebacker he just may stick to it. it's a good thing he got in the face of Rowe. Caleb Spencer was wide open for 10 yards down the field but because he was in the vision of Rowe, Rowe tried to scramble to get away from him buying more time big loss second and 17 four man rush draw play for Hubbard one broken tackle and knocked out at the 35. It'll be about third down at eight by Jason Vincent. So move on. This was actually from Red Hickey, San Francisco 49ers of the 50s and then re uh, configured for Tom Landry's Dallas Cowboys teams beginning in 1975. Here, Danny White to Tony Hill in the 70s. Shotgun, of course, is uh, most evident now in the spread formation which has been all the rage in college football and we don't get the pistol here it's offset so it's just a short shotgun formation but the pistol will draw for you that Nevada runs on 39 pressure Will steps up looks up and with the pump fake is going to be really close to the first down James Cook had him one on one in the open field and he got the first down. You know, he, he's blessed in the ability to be able to move and run, but he has to also recognize opportunities to pull up and throw the football, you know, and, and uh, he has really added a dimension in this game to that UCF defensive line. You know, that defense over those front seven, they're running around the football field. So we show you that. Uh, Brief two minute history of offensive innovation in college football just to bring you to this look. Only Nevada's Chris Alt using it at this point. Hubbard unable to get back to the line of scrimmage, but who knows next year? Maybe a handful of teams running it. Who knows in five years? But it's interesting to look back, and every innovation on offense was then countered with a similar innovation on defense and the chess game continues year after year whatever the offense comes up with defense is going to have to come up with an answer then it's the offense's turn the dance continues on decade by decade yeah and you know what you've got the seven yard tailback you got the quarterback though at four yards 
So he's getting the ball a little bit quicker. The snap from the center is a little bit different with your tempo. It's just a little tweak to how you get the offense going. Swing pass, Eastern Flowers. Stop for a loss. UCF defense showing up again. Joe Burnett. And again, Stephen Baker. Sniffing that one out all the way, third and long. Yeah, that UCF defense, George O'Leary has to be happy with the effort that they're giving and getting to the football. Just a little bit, just a little quicker to it. Does the defense need to do anything against the pistol that they're not doing against the shotgun? No, I think when you see the pistol and at least UCF's strategy, find the guards, they're taking it to the ball. Let the snap occur and know there's somebody back there. You know what? It, it, he's going left or right or up the middle. Third down and 12 from the 41. All three receivers to the far side. Mitchell's now going to step up to the right of row. And row in traffic, a strike. Caleb Spencer juggled it and dropped it. Boy, Rowe put it right there. He sure did. You know, he made the right call, too, at the line of scrimmage to get into the play. I think Spencer just tried to dance and shake and bake a little bit with the ball before he had it in possession. But, I mean, stretch the defense out, opens up the inside there. You got a squat. You got zone on outside, inside. You're being bracketed as a receiver. You just got to sit down and hold the ball. It's a first down if he catches it. Big stop for the Golden Knight defense. Fourth down, Justin Bergendahl just did get that one off. And they'll mark it out of bounds around the 25-yard line at the 24. 422 in the third quarter, a two-point game in the Sheraton Hawaii Bowl on this Christmas Eve. Coming up on Sports Center, twas the night before Christmas, and teams were battling all over the NFL. Watch Sports Center next, see who rose and who fell. Sports Center after the Hawaii Bowl. Aloha. A Hawaiian sunset compressed for your uh, entertainment. And that's what it looks like live out at Pearl Harbor, just behind Aloha Stadium. The USS Battleship Missouri on the left, Arizona Memorial on the right. Beginning in the end of World War II. Inside Aloha Stadium, 28-26, UCF taking over at their 26-yard line. They have retaken the momentum that Nevada stole from him in the second quarter. Now the Wolfpack comes up with another big hit. And Scott Garrison, who's lifted his Roosevelt Cooks back up, has learned some things from playing behind Cooks. They hit just about exactly the same way. You know what they figured out is you got to get to the ball carrier before he gets beyond that line of scrimmage because these running backs, Kevin Smith leading the way, if they have momentum, they have got a lot of speed. So you've got to make them dance and shake before they get to the line of scrimmage. No gain for Smith, who is at 161 yards, 22 carries and a score. Brandon Marshall down at the left. Moffitt blitzed. Just got away from Cooks and looks up there. Darcy Johnson, nobody on him. They beat the blitz by going to the tight end, and he's hit late out of bounds at the 44. By Mike Samples after a gain of 30. And Johnson, 6'5", 255. After the still run, down. out of bounds. Personal foul, late hit on the defense, number 24. 15 yards will be added to the end of the run. First down. Samples, freshman safety from Long Beach, California, with the late hit right there at the knees of oh, Johnson. Man. So bad enough that it's at the knees, making a bad situation worse. It was out of bounds. Mm. Well, you just hope that that's a, a, a tweak on the knee because he's a heck of a football player. And and you can see the respect that Brandon Marshall, number six, had. He goes to the middle of the field, and you had blue jerseys all around him, and they forgot about the tight end coming across. So back to the definition of a tweak. Is a tweak an injury that you can come back into the game oh, yeah. with? Oh, yeah. 
Anything beyond that is yeah. much more than just a tweak. Yeah. You, you, if you get tweaked out, it's gone beyond the tweak. Darcy Johnson's brother, Willie Offord, gets it back with the Vikings. He played at South Carolina for the last team to go from a winless regular season to a postseason in one year. Lou Holtz did the same thing George O'Leary did when the Holtz took over South Carolina, suffered through an 0 and 11, then got him in short order to a bowl, the outback. You know, and sometimes a player, you get that shot to the leg and you, you're, it scares you more than it hurts you. So first down, now 29 of Nevada. Late third quarter. UCF up 14, then trailing by 11, trying to regain the lead here. And dropped by Rocky Ross, the long fade. Covered by D'Angelo Wilson. Here comes the late flag. Moffitt put it right there. Easily catchable, it appeared for Ross, the freshman who replaces their leading receiver, Mike Walker. Pass interference on a defense, number four. 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. So that's two straight series, Craig. They get D'Angelo Wilson for interference. You know, and, and they're going to probably look. It's bumped, so he's put him on an island on the outside. Nevada's defense is putting the challenge, and there's the right hand on the inside. But you know what? The receiver pushed off. There's mutual contact there. And I think Ross pushed as hard and as much as Wilson did. That could be offsetting. That could be no call. No call. Instead, yeah. bad luck for D'Angelo Wilson. Yep. And the Nevada fans who see that on the replay screen being heard now is it's first down at the 15 for UCF. From 0 and 11 to their first bowl flag. But no whistle. This will make us look for offside. Kevin Smith stacked up at the line of scrimmage by Matt Hines and Joe Garcia. We'll hear again from our referee Scott Novak from the Mountain West. Legal formation on the offense. Not enough men on the line of scrimmage. Five yard penalty. Repeat first down. Check in quickly with Susie. Well, interestingly enough, they're taping Darcy Johnson's right ankle. They're not even looking at his knee at all, guys. He already had some tape on it heavily, and they're adding that many more rolls to it right now. Well, interesting, because he, he took the shot right on the knee. Yeah, and it like that knee came to the inside. Uh, but sometimes when you got a, a, a dinger and you get tweaked on that dinger, it's, it's a dinger times two, and you just got to lay there. We need another definition. <laughs> yeah. James Glossary. Dinger. Some of that football stuff. They're just bad bruise. No, which way did he go? Safety blitz. Moffat has to throw that one away. <laughs> Things really started to turn for the Nevada defense when they got on the move. They started to go with some stunts. They started to blitz Stephen Moffat. And right about then, they started to get control of this game. And, and, and that's the same deal. It's the it's the it's the run blitz. Barry Sachs, the co-defensive coordinator, he you know had to make an adjustment because they were getting gashed with the run by UCF, and they made an adjustment. Of course, and what that's doing is that's putting these corners on an island, and that's why you've had a couple pass interference calls. Antonio Eldemeyer now a tight end for Johnson. This catch by Marshall with a stiff arm stays on his feet inside the 10, down to about the six. And a flag back at the 27 yard line. Marshall came within a yard of a first and goal. On a defense, number four, helmet to helmet contact. Half the distance from the end of the line, automatic first down. Well, another penalty on D'Angelo Wilson. Talk about Brandon Marshall. Ooh. Right there, they're calling for helmet on helmet. Two pass interference penalties, and now this. And uh, Nevada, one of the least penalized teams in the country, is well over their quota. It's first and goal at the four. getting Marshall in motion. And 
they stay on the ground and again Kevin Smith a mark man since this spectacular first quarter no gain here. Slow methodical and that offensive line at UCF has finally gotten their pads set again. You know it's like they, they got lathered up real good in the first quarter first half of the first quarter and then they went cold They crystallized over there. Co-defensive coordinator Tim DeRuiter without the hat. Dealing with Barry Sachs. Second straight running play, and this time Kevin Smith is in, and UCF is back on top again. Second touchdown. For Kevin Smith, who's at 164 yards, the flags on D'Angelo Wilson making that drive a lot easier for the Golden Knight offense. Up 32 28, they missed a two point try that would have tied it at 28 or their last series. They'll go for the two point conversion here for a six point lead. And Moffitt almost. Is intercepted by Joe Garcia, intended for Rocky Ross. Right in Garcia's hand. So keep it at four. 32 28. Golden Knights back in front on a golden Christmas Eve in Honolulu. World's worst weather forecast here, apparently. Nope, nope, nope. Got it right. Our friends at the 25th Infantry Division at the, the Schofield Barracks here on Oahu. We're it could hardly be more spectacular, couldn't it? How about that sunset? Not often we get to do a game in in uh, what do you call these shirts? Uh, hula, uh, Hawaiian shirts. Hawaiian shirts. Generally. There's another name for them. Hula something. Aloha, perhaps. Uh, I don't know. Aloha shirts. Hawaii shirts. Little shorts. Little sandals. Well, I'm, I hope in your case never again with those shorts and those sandals. Well, these sandals have got some age to them now. They're comfortable. Well, I am aware, as are all of us here in the booth with you. UCF back in front, 32 28. That Freighter's kept his kicks, uh, kicks uh, very deep and unreturnable all night. Monday, college football's leading active rusher, D'Angelo Williams, leads Memphis against an Akron Zip team, making its first ever bowl appearances a 1 A fashion. The Motor City Bowl kicking off Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN Monday. Coverage begins with the College Game Day Bowl special presented by Outback Steakhouse at 3.30 Eastern. That one is in sparkling ESPN high definition. Sparkling. Now up to the Wolfpack to respond. Back and forth game. They trailed by 14, then led by 11. Now back down by four. Rowe perfectly on the mark. On the rollout, Caleb Spencer, who had a key drop on their last series, hangs on to this one. Let's check in with Susie. Dave, continuing the, with the theme of George O'Leary letting, letting his guys coach, well, maybe not right now. He just went over to Lance Thompson, the defensive coordinator, and says, shut down the middle. Time to shut down the run right there, and you might see them close that gap right now. Yeah, he said that a big part of his philosophy is let his coordinators call the game. He says, I don't want coaches coaching with uh, any fear in the pit of their stomachs. Uh, that's not going to help anybody, not them, not our team. But he will make suggestions as far as the general flow. Spencer breaks free, can't get to the slight overthrow. Caleb Spencer in the clear. That was going to go 69 yards. Oh, man. And you know what? Everybody in the stadium, you can hear them going, oh, as they saw it. Spencer gets behind the defense and a nice double move. Wow, that would have moved him out there. He sold it hard. Just out of his reach. The junior from here in Oahu gathered up some 170 tickets for his family. Said that that's only family. That's not counting friends. He will be married next June on the Kamehameha campus here on Oahu. Flowers with the screen. Turns it up for about nine. Not quite enough for the first. It'll be third less than one. Yeah, but you know what? That's a that's a smart football player there. 
he, he knows he's going back as a receiver. When you get that ball out there, it, the pursuit's coming from the inside out. Make one miss, but you got to get back north. You cannot continue to try to get across the entire defense. Jeff Rose numbers. Total offense, Wolfpack 426 yards. Golden Knights 426 yards. On third and short, they call on Mitchell. Big hold, Mitchell dragging the only man separating him from a touchdown into UCF territory. It was Corey Hogue. He still got 13 yards. But you notice here, it's short yardage, and they don't go underneath the center. They stay in the pistol formation, so it's a short shotgun snap. And, and with the ab ability of the runner, and, and the vision, you talk about the hole, a nice job blocking in and out, and the running back in the short yardage goal line situation, Mitchell, he has to beat one man. That's his guy. Mitchell at 118 yards, two touchdowns on his 15 carries. Fake to him, roll rolling. Looks up, Anthony Pudewell called on for the first time. The tight end, second team all wax selection. Pudewell inside the 35, a gain of 13. He's goofy too right now. Pudewell didn't know if he is. Somebody better tell him it's still Christmas Eve. <laughs> still 15 minutes to play, too, in a highly entertaining certain Hawaii Bowl you're looking at. As the sun sets behind Aloha Stadium. Dave Barnett, Craig James, Susie Schuster, Merry Christmas from our entire ESPN crew at the Sheraton Hawaii Bowl where we start the fourth quarter, 32-28 UCF, Central Florida in its first bowl appearance in year two under George O'Leary. Robert Hubbard goes off tackle and picks up about three and it's time for a Sports Center 30 at 30 update from Neil Everett. Huge day in the NFL. Seattle beat Indianapolis. Colts with heavy hearts. Seahawks with the heavy duty. Sean Alexander, three scores, ties the NFL record for scores in a season. Seattle clinches NFC home field. That's the only NFC definitive playoff wise. Redskins beat the Giants. May have lost Mark Brunel to a knee injury. Both teams thick in the playoff hunt. More on Sports Center, always on ESPN News. Back to paradise. All right. No and on the second down roll, again, this combination shows up. Row to Spencer. Early on, it was row to Flowers, and now it's Caleb Spencer. Nobody can cover. But you know how they roll a pocket at Nevada so well, and they're so. And row is so patient and allows the place to develop. And that flat, they keep throwing, it, throwing it underneath, throwing it underneath. He'll take off and run some. But then all of a sudden, you might have another chance. Like Caleb Spencer got behind the secondary a while ago because they didn't throw underneath. Keep an eye on him. He's top of your screen, wide right on third down and three. Two down territory here, in my opinion. Should be, maybe don't need two downs. As there's movement on the left side of the UCF defensive line. They, of course, are going to claim they were drawn off sides. Be about the third one, wouldn't it? Third one of the game. Offside on a defense, number 44, contact in a neutral zone. Five yard oh. penalty. Ooh, first there's down. that look. There's that look. <laughs> Our Nikon game track, UCF, after trailing 28 17, has a streak of 15 unanswered going. And the total yardage a moment ago was dead even at 426. Right now it's Nevada at 459. It's been back and forth just like this all afternoon and now all evening here in Honolulu. Antonio Wallace, the guilty party. On first and ten, the fake to Mitchell. Rowe will keep. And again, there's room. And James Cook grabs him after a pickup of about six. Let's check in with Susie. Just to add to that comment about the look, what was so great about the look he just gave that ref was he did it with a smile. You know, I would not want to be on the other end of one of his nasty looks, but he did it with a twinkle in his eye. You can really tell that Georgia Leary is having fun coaching again, and that's what's so important right now in this role here at UCF. Hey, <laughs> twinkle in his eye? He did. Craig, I kid you not, oh. he actually gave him the nasty look and then smiled. Gave him the nasty look and smiled, then he walked away. Uh, you're thinking Santa Claus, Susie. Oh, it's not Christmas yet, Craig. <laughs> Second out and four. 
E.J. Mitchell, huge hole. They have not shut down the middle as ordered by Coach O'Leary. John L. Neal has made way too many tackles for a left corner. Gain of 11, first and goal. Talk about the guards at Nevada. The offense that is apparently the key. Central Florida, they said, we're going to watch these guards. They're going to take us to the hole. Well, those linebackers at UCF haven't necessarily filled those holes. Case of knowing what to do, generally knowing where the ball's headed, and still not being able to do anything about it. So from the five, they lined up Hubbard at a wing, put him in motion, hand it to him, touchdown. Robert Hubbard puts the Wolfpack back on top. You know what? It, the first thing that comes to my mind is a nice job of getting your ball carrier an opportunity to get to the corner. The second thing that comes to my mind is the speed that Hubbard has, the ability for him to get to the corner. Three touchdown day for Hubbard, as he had against Fresno when he rolled up 146 yards. What a tandem, B.J. Mitchell and Robert Hubbard. For the extra point, Brett Jekyll, 35-32. Go online and vote for the Pontiac game-changing performance of the year and tune into the Rose Bowl to find out the winner. How many game-changing plays have we seen in this thing? Well, I'd stick around because I know watching one practice by one of these teams, I saw a couple of nice little element plays, little uh, uh, plays that will test the defense's ability to see it. And here in the fourth quarter, I doubt they want to take it home with them. Robert Hubbard will be back next year. This is it for B.J. Mitchell, the senior from Loomis, California. Hubbard from Emeryville. Look forward to the senior year in which he can be the feature back and step in for the WAC Offensive Player of the Year, B.J. Mitchell. But it's a nice compliment, isn't it, Dave? When you when you see that Mitchell runs hard tackle to tackle, and then all of a sudden you get a Hubbard that's got the speed to get to the corner. Three lead changes. It was UCF early, 14-0. Okay. Wolfpack caught him in the second quarter, got up 28-17, fell down 32-28, now back on top, 35-32. Jason Vincent, a very short return. So how effective have Mitchell and Hubbard been today? Both over 100 yards. Man, that's a nice night. Look at the that's, average that's 28, 28 carries for 237 yards. That's what just leaps off the screen right there. Oh, yeah? Hey, you know what? You always come over once a, once a night. You like to come over. If and you're draw. not going to use it, well, I was wasted money. What my mind was thinking, I was trying to figure out which way I wanted to go with it. You beat me to the draw. While you were thinking, yeah. the moment passed. Okay. You had a little pistol of your own. Again. So UCF. Again, coming from behind, it is Jason Peters' turn to be the feature back. He's a junior from Seattle. Grew up in Florida, lived there until high school, so he's going to be back. Not much from Dontavius Wilcox today. They normally uh, find a way to play all three, Peters, Wilcox, and the starter, Smith. Just a freshman, three more years out of Kevin. And Tim Salem, the offensive coordinator, he's done a nice job of sticking to the run, now setting up a little play action. And, and being patient with setting it up. Moffitt, given time, now has to scramble. And will keep and be run out short of the first down. Darcy Johnson, by the way, the tight end who tweaked an ankle a couple of series ago, has returned for UCF. Ah, minimal tweak. You can't you, take you, you know, but you know what? If you come back that quick, you can't lay down there that long. They had to retape it to get him back out there. Okay. So third and three. Marshall comes wide right, Ross right left. Marshall now in motion. Moffitt looking for him. 
again forced to scramble. They have him. They wrap him up back at the 25. Big sack for the Nevada defense. Charles Wilson from the defensive end, a loss of six. Well, it's pretty simple now. Moffitt's go-to guy is going to the middle of the field. Brandon Marshall, number six, and you'll find right here to your right side of your screen, you see blue jerseys bracketing number six. He's not available. Sometimes when you get too comfortable with one guy, you can't find the number two guy. Alex Rosenblum awaits the kick from Aaron Horn. Woo. Has he ever recovered from his 14-yard shank? Rosenblum from the 22. Oh. Nothing there. Oh, man. Blowout. And Rosenblum comes away grabbing that left knee after a 53-yard punt by Horn. We'll see how Rosenblum is 10 to 2 with 11.22 to play. I tell everybody who comes to Hawaii to relax. Unwind. And just cruise. But sometimes the hardest thing to do is nothing at all. The people of Hawaii would like to share their islands with you. Plan your trip now at GoHawaii.com. Junior punt returner Alex Rosenblum out of West Hills, California, helped to the bench. If you're squeamish, you might not want to watch what happened to him. A non contact situation here, correct? Yeah, you know what? The, you, you plant in such a violent turn that that the knee really twisted more, far more than it should. And and uh, his family there, I, we would only guess that's his family, but uh, certainly their concern is uh, is real and it should be, and we wish him the best. Yep. Susie will report as they uh, have a diagnosis as uh, Nevada now. 11 minutes plus works with their three point lead. Rosenblum being 10 to 2. After Mitchell picks up three. So backup wide receiver plays behind Caleb Spencer. He has had a big night. Nine catches for 94 yards in his homecoming. Speaking of Spencer, he is down here. 87. He has stepped up tonight, hasn't he? They're on a show for the hometown folks, except for here. Jinx. Oh, just a couple of those mixed in. You know, you, 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 you give a guy a little pub, get in the big head. Spencer family, not at all happy to see that. Second and seven drop. A couple of key drops, too, by Caleb here in, in this. Uh, Late in the part in the ball game, you know, and, and everything in a game this tight, you just got to keep the ball away from the opponent if you're on the offense. And uh, Nevada can't afford to have drops like that. This is a UCF timeout. First by either team here in the second half. And I tell you what, you're talking about no air in either tank right now. I get a feeling for UCF and for Nevada. Both teams right now are just feeling. This uh, this break, but I think just a brief brief break. I think they're gonna give us a spectacular finish. Oh, <laughs> I'm not trying to desell the thing. I'm with Sun you. Sunday night. That's tomorrow. Christmas uh, special. Brad Johnson and the Vikings. <laughs> we'll visit Ed Reed and the Baltimore Ravens. Coverage begins at 7:30 Eastern with NFL primetime presented by Miller Lite. Vikings Ravens also available in high definition on ESPN HD. The Christmas special. On Sunday Night Football here on ESPN. Boy, it's been a great week here. And the, I, I, do we have to go back? I well, I, I've delayed it till tomorrow. And uh, would they miss us if we don't show up for work in three or four weeks? <laughs> Sadly, <laughs> perhaps not. <laughs> uh, I might not like the answer to that question. Yeah. Well. Alex Rosenblum continues to uh, have the left knee checked. Twisted under him on the punt return a moment ago. And now Nevada ready for a third and seven. Well, it eat some clock up and uh, 
ultimately trying to add to a 35 32 lead. We've seen a lot of success with Rowe getting to the flat, rolling to the corners, and throwing it underneath. Well, plenty of time. Here, Spencer hangs on first down to the 41. Good job that time of Rowe not making it obvious he was going to Spencer all the way. 13 yards. And, and you know what? You know why? The defensive back saw just what you did. He, he was not obvious. Rowe's feet and shoulders moved. He went through his progressions, and you could see the body making the reads, too, so that once he found the right guy, he could deliver the football with rhythm. As soon as he set in motion, he just knew what was coming. Rowe finds him. Spencer hangs on. His 10th catch. Now 108 yards. Rowe will again keep. Ronnell Sandy gave chase. Did not quite get out of bounds. That's fine with Rowe. The clock continues to roll. Susie, what have you found out about Alex Rosenblum? Well, right now, Mark Paul, the trainer, is calling this a sprain, just a left knee sprain. But the trainers were holding that MCL area, which goes on the inside of the knee. He's now got ice on top and on the bottom. They're going to take him for an MRI when they get back to Nevada. So we've got Dr. Jerry Punch and Dr. Susie Schuster. I, I've had my knee done. I know this only too well. I uh, know. Unfortunately, I do, too. Uh, Hopefully it's not anything worse than that. Which you always fear when you see it uh, twist so violently on artificial turf as happened here to Rosenblum. Kyle Sammons right at the first down marker immediately spun down by Joe Burnett. Sammons a junior. One of 64 Californians on the Nevada roster. They have 20 from their home state. More than three times of that from the rich recruiting area. This to the West. And you know what? Speaking with their coaches, they said after their Fresno State victory that right now their recruiting is hot. They've got players really looking at them and, and talking about the program, finding out more about Nevada and the facilities they have. Good things happening. Chris Alt's third tour of duties, the head coach. Hubbard, three touchdown night. He and Mitchell both well over 100 yards. He plows forward to the 40. That dude is good. You know, when you see a running back with a lean like he has, got that face mask out, he's got his shoulder pads over in front of his, of his feet, he's going forward. And uh, this offensive line at Nevada has done an excellent job of, of moving and getting to the corners, finding the right guys. And who's making plays right now? You know what? Jeff Rowe is finding a way to keep the ball away from UCF. 18 out of 25, row 220 yards. Keep it on the ground for Hubbard. He will cough it up after he reached the first down marker. And UCF recovers at the 35-yard line. Paul Carrington. Craig, you were waiting for the senior to show up, make a big play. He just did. And it's all because of hustle, too. 85 Carrington gets around the ball comes cleanly out Hubbard's trying to hold on to it but sometimes when you're running so hard I mean go get it watch you word the knees down first no nope. balls out nope best angle right here balls loose yep that's a fumble So Hubbard, who has a three touchdown night, gives it away at the 35 yard line. Moffitt back to work. Smith back to work. And he picks up five or six. Boy, isn't that a nice call by Tim Salem? You know, that's really uh, a, a patient. You get the ball back sometimes on a, on a big turnover, you'll find a coordinator will come out and chunk it deep down the field. There's, there's Tim Salem, Salem, Salem. He's, you know, very patient, and uh, maybe he doesn't want to get that look. <laughs> well, I think we've established nobody wants the O'Leary look. Tim Salem, who said this season's just been about what the freshman could do, led by Kevin Smith, Conference USA Freshman of the Year. Just shy of the first down. We head to the seven-minute mark. Central Florida, his first bowl game. 
trying for yet another lead change. They led 14 nothing, then trailed 28 17, went up 32 28, now down by three. And on third and about a foot and a half, two tight ends in the eye. And it's Smith squeezing through for the first down and a couple to spin. And how good is he going to be another two or three years? His fifth 100 yard game. I think this whole team, UCF, with all of the youth that they have playing right now, the upside for them, man, what a foundation. George O'Leary has established it from day one. And we heard the players talk about his first day of practice. The tempo and the people throwing up couldn't handle the workload. That was a pretty large group of people you're referring to, too. Moffitt with a DP under throw, and Wilson, who's had a tough night with the flags, comes away with the pick, his second of the season. And a nice return to boot all the way to midfield. Celebration penalty coming after the interception. And return by redshirt freshman D'Angelo Wilson. He brought it back 36 yards. Ball intended for Willie Thornton. I, I don't think it's a celebration penalty. I think it's a deep leader penalty. I mean, Nevada laid some wood on, on UCF defenders. Well, you had about 25 or 30 guys coming off the bench onto the field. Could be either. Scott Novak will tell us. We also have another injured Golden Knight. After the interception, we had a dead ball, personal foul, 26 of the intercepting team. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run, first down. Well, you were right. They got uh, Roosevelt Cooks for the dead ball penalty. Trying to pick up the number of the injured UCF player with 6.22 to go in Honolulu and Nevada up by three. Back with the ball. ESPN College Football, the Sheraton Hawaii Bowl, is brought to you by Sheraton Hotels, best location on all the beaches, and in part by the Nikon D50 Digital SLR. Incredible pictures made incredibly easy. The ancient Hawaiian art of lay making. The island of Oahu. Injured uh, center for 53, Cedric Gagne Marcoux. On the penalty against Roosevelt Cooks. They back it up to the 36, but Nevada back on offense, up by three. And a huge hole for Mitchell to midfield. D.J. Mitchell takes it 15. Let's look at the penalty. All right, let's go back now. This is on the interception. And, and just in the midfield, you're going to see 26. Here he comes, right? Let's follow this young man here. And, and, and you're going to see that, you, you know, the play is over in your opinion, right, Dave? I think he was down. I mean, it was split second. But yeah. uh, I, I think if you it's definitely behind it, he's him. down. Yep. Yeah, he, it's behind the play. Uh, but, you know, man, Nevada, they, they have sent a lot of messages over there that we will hit you. Giving up 32 points, but it's not as if the defense has not had its moments. Spencer, driven back immediately by Joe Burnett after a game of about six. And, and the I, clock will continue to roll. You know, now UCF has to come up and make a play. Uh, they did the defense the last time. They stripped the ball from Hubbard. Uh, and turn the football over, but they've got to do it. And you know, a guy we haven't really heard a lot about tonight, number 48, James Cook, have we? Have you said his name much? Yeah, a few times. A few times. He's not been dominant. He's, he's gotten no. involved. But he, you know, and he, and, and, oh, he's a big play guy. This, this is a football player that has to come in and make some plays for him. He went to a George O'Leary camp in high school. He said, I don't want to play for this guy. This camp is too tough. I can't imagine playing for him in college. Well, there he was. Slamming for the first down inside the 40 to the 39. Mitchell brought down by Benson and Rashad. James Cook, a senior from Jacksonville, Florida. The only senior linebacker on the team. That's a heavy burden to have to carry being the only over there senior. Uh, 
and George O'Leary with the expectations that he has for this football team. It is not to master the art of laymaking. It is to, <laughs> they want to lay you out. That's his, that's his mindset. I need guys that are going to go out there and fly around and play football. He's found them. They're not all shaving yet necessarily, but they're out there. As are some flags. I think this is going to be the fourth offsides. Offside on a defense, number 44, contact in the neutral zone. Five yard penalty, first down. Once again. Yep, just listening, and, and Jeff Rowe is working it over there using his voice. Chris Alt, I, I just was so impressed by the way he handled his practice and, and uh, coaching, and uh, just, just, they just, just, this is a prepared football team. They're prepared for success. Penalty on Antonio Wallace makes it first and five. Under five minutes, play action and Rowe look deep, decided to tuck and run. Jeff Rowe, a target all night with the legs, been a major weapon in addition to Mitchell and Hubbard on the ground, and he keeps for 11. Run out by Burnett. And UCF with a defense now that is that has all the freshmen on it they do. You know, Lance Thompson, you talked about a guy that, that, that has his work cut out. Uh, it's good and bad. You know what? Both of these schools are realizing now a, as bowl participants with a team, that extra workload that you, the practice, the reps that you're getting, that lays the foundation for a lot of success next year. Like an extra spring practice, the way the coaches uh, look at it. Many of them say it is the single best benefit of making the postseason. Mitchell into the secondary. It's first and goal from the seven. Ryan Gabriel prevents this touchdown by B.J. Mitchell, who's already scored twice. 15 more yards. You know, the, the strength, you, you're not used to tackling so low. You see that right there, an arm tackle, no shot. There's a big fellow up top, barely able to bulldog him. I mean, when you're that low to the ground, it and you're is hiding hard. behind the quarterback to Absolutely. begin with. Absolutely, and, and he weighs what? Let's go to the cheat sheet here. 205. Uh, 205, and Five that's eight. probably 210, 215, really. You know, you know he had a couple extra biscuits this week, and that's a lot of power. And uh, it's like uh, Mike Hart at, at Michigan. Short, it's a low strike zone for a defender. Guys aren't used to having to tackle like that. Defensive tackle, Frisner Nelson had to be helped off. Mitchell now at 167, 8.4 per carry. They have run for 347 yards. And Mitchell again, this time smacked down for no gain. Keith Shalligan. The tackle. He plays alongside. Frisner Nelson was there. At the eight, we're at second and goal. And you know what, that man right there, the one before is thinking three points. This guy here, Coach Alt, he's thinking touchdown. Three points is a three points is a big victory for that UCF defense. It will be a first. That's huge right there. Otherwise, Central Florida looking at having to score twice in the last three minutes or so. Rowe faking to Mitchell. Throw wide open. Touchdown. Travis Franzel with his first catch of the season. Well, they've been saving that one up for 12 games. And the junior from Spring Creek, Nevada, brings it in to add to the lead. You, you know, you, that's, this is the beauty of, of what Mitchell has done on the ground. They've been running behind those tight ends. Those tight ends have been getting their jobs done, blowing in there, blocking, blocking. They've been covered a lot in the, in the flats, and you sell it hard. Next thing you know, you pop wide open. Travis Branzell, uh, who gets more action, is their deep snapper. The third tight end makes it Nevada by nine. Jekyll makes it a 10-point lead with 3.18 to go. Everybody involved in this Nevada offense. As ESPN's full road trip wraps up on Christmas Eve. From Honolulu, Nevada by 10.
Coming up on SportsCenter, twas the night before Christmas and teams were battling all over the NFL. Watch SportsCenter next, see who rose and who fell. SportsCenter after the Hawaii Bowl. Aloha. Well, those of you in the East, Merry Christmas. Just past midnight, just past 7 Hawaii time. The Sheraton Hawaii Bowl, as expected, loads of offense in Nevada now at 580 total yards. 347 rushing. Rose thrown for 233, 20 of 27. His first touchdown pass moments ago put him up by 10. George O'Leary's offense has totaled 440 yards, 241 on the ground. Jekyll with a high pop-up. And fair caught at the 24. So 318 to go. Two timeouts to work with and UCF needing two scores. Right. Certainly it's a doable deal here. And and when you've got a receiver that's as talented as Brandon Marshall, he can carry about six of them with him to the end zone. <laughs> it's not like you're uh, asking the undoable, unthinkable. Big reason UCF is here is they have dominated the close games. You have to think that goes back to the tremendous conditioning work they did in the offseason that they talked about at length yesterday. Moffitt short dump over the middle. Peters takes it for a first down of the 35. A team that was in the nowhere near the shape they ended up seven and one games decided by ten or less undefeated in games decided by three or less and in the fourth quarter what does this tell you they outscored their opponents by better than two to one one oh eight to fifty three have to be in shape to do that Marshall tried to make a move on Garcia who was having none of it it's a game of nine. Now Craig people are going to look in the paper tomorrow and see the UCF tried twice unsuccessfully for two point conversions. It's not the type of thing I think you second guess because they weren't chasing a missed extra point. No, I think it, at, at the time that they did those, I, I thought it was the right thing. I, you know, some people say always take points when you can get them, but uh, in that situation, I don't believe that that's a point of emphasis for this ball game. Darcy, another tackle this time on Darcy Johnson, who left briefly with a twisted ankle. Sports Center coming up immediately following. 2.32 to go. UCF has reached midfield. One two-point conversion made perfect sense because they were down two trying to tie the game. Next time they're trying to turn a four-point lead to a six-point lead. Five, not that valuable. As Peters takes the short toss, and three straight stops by Garcia. That stops the clock, too, at 2.25. I, I circle Brandon Marshall and... Uh, they need a, UCF needs a big strike right now. They've got a score. I know they've got two timeouts remaining, but Marshall, with his size and strength, has the ability to break one or two tackles and make a big play yards after the catch. He's wide left. Top right hand corner of your screen. Moffitt cutting for him, and he finds the seam at the 30. Brandon Marshall without the benefit of Mike Walker who teamed with him as the top receiving tandem in Conference USA. Walker tore up a knee in the regular season finale against Rice. Marshall nine catches 167 yards and two touchdowns tonight. He's out of gas. <laughs> well leaving it all out there in his final college game that throw incomplete for Rocky Ross. Oh man, that's, I'm glad you said that. Uh, I, one of the coaches for Nevada before the game was talking about they had a they had a a meeting this morning or today, and they were talking to each one of the seniors, and they were shaking their hands, and it was an emotional, very emotional reminder that for both benches, this is the last time these seniors, most of them, will ever even put a helmet on again. Second down and 10. Moffitt moves back for another year. Garcia came on a corner blitz. And underneath the completion for a first down, they will mark at the 17 yard line. Bring in the catch, Kenny Jackson, his first reception of the night. This bend but don't break defensive. Philosophy is not bad right now. I mean, at this point in the game, it's okay. Let them let it just milk that clock down. 
Incomplete again for Ross. Stopping the clock at a minute 53. Golden Knights with two timeouts, needing two scores. And, and I tell you what, they really need. They, they need almost a timeout just so the receivers can catch their breath. They're, they're winded. And it's hard to make a play when you're out of gas. You said Marshall, nine for 167. Both of Moffitt's touchdown passes. Otherwise, Moffitt, eight completions to everyone else he's thrown to. <laughs> Marshall's thinking, man, maybe 220 would be better than 230 right now. And all the others have combined for 99 yards. To the end zone, just off the hand of Marshall. Did he short on that one? No, Before no, he around? didn't have, he, he was a step behind. The ball was thrown where he would have been. If Marshall were fresh, he would have been there. Watch him. You can just see there's no drive really coming out of it right now, is there? You know, he's standing up tall. He's not driving. And just that half a step kept him from making a touchdown reception. I would say to Brandon Marshall, you can play in the National Football League, son, but you, you, need to, you need to lose just a little weight. You can't afford not to have that extra little burst when you need it in the game. They will use their second timeout here. One left for the Golden Knights. A minute 49 left for them, needing two scores. Trailing 42-32. Sports Center comes up next. John Bucci-Gross and Neil Everett are standing by with all today's news and highlights, including on a huge day in the NFL, Sean Alexander's record day, all the playoff scenarios, and a preview of Shaq versus Kobe. As the Lakers will take on the Heat in a Christmas NBA special. The great thing about this game is not only that you get to spend whole week in Honolulu, but it, every time that uh, we've been here, this is the kind of offensive show people put on. And we're going to be right at about uh, 1,000 total yards combined today. And loving it. You know what? Uh, it's really been a treat to watch these two teams play because you know that both squads have different kind of liabilities or handicaps. And the youth of UCF has really had to learn a lot tonight. And then Jeff Rowe over at Nevada, he's had to come out there and he's had to take this team and to do something with it, and they've responded. So is their defense, yep. too. The Nevada's defense stepped up. Remember at the first quarter, if you're watching, man, they were getting drilled. Mm. Looked like it might be a UCF route where they quickly went up 14 to nothing. Here's Moffitt on third and 10. Is dropped way back outside the 30. Ezra Butler, the bandit outside linebacker for a loss of 13. Ezra Butler, a soccer player from South Africa. Father, a jazz musician, has made a quick conversion to outside backer. Look at the movement of the backers. The Nevada linebackers have done the damage inside. And it, and it started all oh, around the first quarter. And, and, and once they, they made that adjustment, and it's really a run blitzing kind of deal, but it, it works so well that they've stuck with it. Nevada just did a nice job of making a defensive adjustment and getting after them. Go for the field goal here. It's going to be fourth and 22. You got to get inside the eight. Or uh, you got a strong leg. Any oh, trader who yeah. has just uh, drilled a 47 yarder tonight. It would have been good from 60. Mm -hmm. And that's the way they go. They Absolutely. need three at some point anyway. So this is going to be right at about 46, 47 yards. The chance of them converting fourth and 22 is, is minimal. They got a much better chance, and they need the three, as you just pointed out. Get the three, go onside kick, see if he can get it back. Two he made were uh, overpowering. He did duck hook from 40. Should be three shy of his longest this year. In his career, he's hit from up to 53. This to make it a seven-point game and set up an onside kick. Good snap and hold. Again, plenty of distance, and again, good. So senior Matt Prater with his third field goal of the night makes it 42-35 and they'll await the onside kick with a minute 32. And UCF you know, has just did a, they did a nice job of getting down the field, getting the points, giving themselves a chance. And that's all you can ask for. 
when you're down 10 points, you've got to give yourself self a shot at it. And we're getting ready to see an onside kick against the hands teams unit. And it's one of those things you practice during the week. And there are a lot of schools where they give it about 60, 70 percent real mental focus when they're out there. Most schools go through the motions. Ah, it's hands team. All right, let's go. Recover it. OK, good. It's the schools that really pay attention to these little details of ki onside kick or hands team. Those are the teams that 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 give themselves a chance to win your weekend and so, week out. So a team that recovers an onside kick doesn't do it just because of a lucky bounce. And it, no, you gotta, you've got to have confidence that you understand how to execute. Don't sit back. You know, I tell my two boys when they're playing football, I said, hey, go get the football. If you're up there, indecision will squash you, absolutely nail you. If you don't go get it, somebody else is. Here's the hands team for the Wolfpack. Strung out waiting for the kick coming from Craig. Notice so he doesn't actually have it on the tee. It's just leaning up against the tee with that big, big, tall bounce. Come on, kick it. Bada recovers this game over. There's the big bounce. And you see it. He's going to come up with it at the 48 yard line. How about that? Could you do it any better? And, and what did I say, Dave, that, that the you will definitely make the wrong decision if you're indecisive. You cannot sit back on the hands team front line and let the ball come to you. You've got to go get the football. Ball's in the air. Go get it. Look at that. Standing there waiting on it. Knowing you're going to get blown up. Go get the football. Jeff Branham does. Number 46. Senior from Orange, Massachusetts. At the 48 of the Wolfpack. Right in front of George O'Leary. UCF with no timeouts, but 92 seconds to go, 48 yards. And they start with Marshall over the middle. Runs away from Garcia. Brandon Marshall knocked out by Stallings at the 21, a gain of 27. And Marshall is near 200 receiving yards on 10 catches for 194. Huddle up, relax, be composed, take the full clock. Stay in the huddle, Moffitt. Let the receivers recover. Don't come running out of there. You're in no time constraints of pressure to get up there and run another play. Moffitt is blitzed. And is that a forward pass? Yes, incomplete. Really close to a fumble, but the arm ruled going forward as Roosevelt Cooks came in on him. Well, the last play, UCF's offensive line was able to pick up the blitz protection. This time they don't. That's a fumble. You think? Yeah, I think it's a fumble. As we were watching it, I thought for sure arm was going forward. Eric Clark made the contact. Cooks recovered, but... I mean, it, is it, the arm going forward? No, no, that's not it, though. There, see, that's a fumble. I think it's going forward. That's a fumble. Second down and 10. Moffitt. Three times they have tried that pattern to Rocky Ross, and three times they've come up empty, covered by Shannon Savore. This was the closest they've come. Ross at least got it on his fingertips, and it's third and ten. How can you not review that play? It's surprising that they didn't review it. Come on now. I mean, I still think it would have been upheld, but it was close enough to look at it. It's close enough for a look-see. And these are two teams that didn't come over here, you know, for a shot just to have a good day. I mean, they came over here to win. And, and uh, you got to look at it. Keep an eye on Marshall, wide left on third and ten. Again, Moffitt forced to scramble. There's a flag. As it's incomplete inside the five. Intended for the tight end, R.C. Johnson. Look for a face mask, perhaps, here. 
Yep, they got it on Ezra Butler. Five yard face mask on a defense number 56. Five yard penalty, third down. Definitely a good call there. So with a minute one to go, the five yard mark off, third and five. We used to always in the huddle, we, we would remind ourselves out loud, not the quarterback, the other guys, linemen in the backs, hey, the blitz, it's been working up the middle. Be prepared, find your man, step up in the hole. And, and at this point, Nevada's defense has been nailing them up the middle of those linebackers. Tenth penalty, twice the yardage they normally give up. Not the time they want flags here, protecting a seven point lead with 61 seconds. UCF doing this without any timeouts left. After getting the field goal to bring him within seven and recovering the onside kick. Driving from the 48 of the Wolfpack. Up top, there's your man, Marshall. Corner blitz. Marshall is going to beat it up the middle for the touchdown. The Wolfpack gamble and lose. Garcia leaves Marshall to come on the blitz. Marshall romps 16 yards. Now, this is the big body. And linebackers have got to find a way to get out and look and expect the, 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 route, the route coming to the inside. And Brandon Marshall with that big body, he's tough to bring down. Now Prater, who's missed only two extra points all season, to tie it at 42. Perfect. UCF with 10 unanswered points. In the final two minutes of the game here, and Nevada, which was a play away, which was a recovered onside kick away from celebrating victory. Now, with all three of their timeouts, we'll try to figure out how to get it down and at least get a field goal try off in the final 55 seconds. And I got a feeling Santa Claus, when he comes over the top of this stadium, may want to circle Rudolph a couple of times just to finish it off. What do you think? Perfect end to a perfect night. Well, there's not much question. Nevada offensively can pull this off. It's, can UCF defensively come away with a big play? Marshall gutted it out. 11 catches, 210 yards now, and three touchdowns in his Golden Knight finale. Senior from Winter Park near Orlando. You know, now the question is, and you see it all the time, you, you squib one down the middle of the field to prevent the setup of the blocking scheme, you know, or do you punch it up high and let them fair catch it around the 30 35. I don't think you can afford to go short with this thing. I believe you got to kick it because they only need a field goal to win the game. How about eleven hundred plus total yards. Eighty four points. Brader does blast this one deep Hubbard as he has most of the night watches it sail through the end zone. So the Wolfpack, 55 seconds, starting from their 20 after a four-play, 48-yard drive, following the recovered onside kick. If anything, the only thing they change is they wouldn't do it so fast. They, they scored in just 37 seconds. That's Jeff Rowan Company, plenty of time. Brett Jekyll getting loose. His longest, he's had a, a great season in terms of percentage, 80%, but his longest is just 40. Walk on red shirt freshman from Las Vegas who hopes he has a chance to decide this year in Hawaii Bowl. Rowe keeping fooling no one. Picks up only one, does not stop the clock. So they'll have to use their first time out here to do so. Kareem Reed coming up, leading the UCF. Defensive assault. Now, Coach Alt has definitely told Jeff Rowe not to make a mistake. Don't try to force something. If it's not there, you eat it. We've got three timeouts. We can live to make another play. But the last thing they need to do is make a mistake down here and give UCF a chance at a big field goal. So would you just 
Forget about trying to win this in regulation no, at no, this point? No, not at all. We've seen so many big plays in this game tonight that there's no there's no reason for there not to be uh, at least the potential for a big play. You strike something, go down to the 50-yard line on the next play, uh, you've got two timeouts to go. I mean, that's a lot of time, 45 seconds, plus the clock stops when you get the first down and, you know. Well, this is what set up the tying score with the Golden Knights. The onside kick recovered by Jeff Branham. Marshall then set up what would eventually become the no fumble call. And then as Garcia left him on the quarter blitz, Marshall burning the gambling Wolfpack defense with his third touchdown catch of the night. He got it all started with a 51-yard grab way back to make it 7 to nothing on their fourth play from scrimmage. Rowe for Flowers. He will turn and make a move on Stephen Baker and pick up the first down to the 32. Clock stops at 37 seconds. Did you see that football waving around in the open space? That would be a tempting target. Absolutely. You know, and, and I think it's very important that Nevada have some success here offensively because they're if they go to overtime, they can't go to overtime in a funk. We're looking at about 50 plus yards to even think about a field goal. Now there's a gamble and he got away with it. Wow. Threw up a prayer for Pudowell. How fortunate is Rowe that that wasn't not only intercepted, but returned for the game winning touchdown by Travanti Johnson. And, and you have to wonder what was Rowe trying to get rid of the football and throw it out of bounds? No, I think he's trying to make a play. <clears throat> well, I think he saw Pudowell and he thought, I'm in the middle. Maybe of the field. I can hit him. If, I, if I'm if I'm calling here, I'm trying to get to the middle of the field. And uh, Caleb Spencer's up top, number 87. He's up top screen. The deep out off the hands of Flowers with 22 seconds, third and ten. And Paul Carrington down. Three defensive linemen at one time or another have been down a couple of them twice for UCF. And here it is the first team all conference USA defensive end, the senior from Guyton, Georgia, Paul Carrington. 95 on the outside, and oh, a leg just got locked underneath. Couldn't get it out of there. That was Frisner Nelson. Mm. Nope, Brian Gabarell, mm. his teammate, who just rolled up on him. So Carrington the latest to go down defensively for UCF with 22 seconds. Grew up a Georgia fan could not stand Georgia O'Leary's Georgia Tech fan and teams growing up near Atlanta. But he said when O'Leary came and got that uh, strenuous offseason program going that we've referred to all night when he saw not just the big guys throwing up in the weight room, but when he saw the DBs and the wide receivers getting sick, he said, that's when I knew it was a new era in UCF football. I, I now, I think I've gotten conservative on you, Dave. I believe I'd, I'd run the football here and uh, not want to have to punt if there were an incomplete pass. Well, definitely no more prayers like the last one should be thrown, although they come out in, the, in a passing look, three wideouts right. And they go draw play for Hubbard. Hubbard to the short side, can't get out of bounds at the 37. Two timeouts left, fourth down coming, and Nevada evidently will look to overtime. So the team that played in the very first Division 1A overtime, the 95 Las Vegas Bowl, will play OT in the 2005 Sheraton Hawaii Bowl. Ten late points by UCF. We're in overtime in the Sheraton Hawaii Bowl. Dave Barnett, Craig James, and Susie Schuster. 42-42, 10 late points by Central Florida. <laughs> forcing the OT. And George O'Leary trying to fire up a very tired Golden Knights team. That looked like Santa Claus from behind, didn't it? Got the gray hair going, big man. After a close shave. So in OT, coin toss. Teams that win the toss always pick defense. They want to know how many points they need to score. Go from the 25, no game clock, and beginning with the third overtime, no more kicking, you must go for two. 
after every touchdown. Scott Novak ready for the overtime coin toss at midfield. Okay, guys, overtime rules. Nevada, you'll call the toss again. The winner of the toss will choose either offense or defense or which end of the stadium we're going to play on. Each team has one timeout, and all video reviews will come from upstairs. Nevada, it's your choice. What is your call? Heads. Choice is heads. It is tails. Central Florida, you want to talk? Defense. Defense. So the lines are drawn now for the overtime tied at 42. You would think if any team would be tired it would be a Nevada team that's not used to the relative heat and humidity here not really all that high it was mid 70s maybe high 70s here today in Orlando that's just a, a typical day pretty much any time of the year at some point or another but a lot of energy to Susie Susie's down there making it sound like really it's UCF that appears more tired. Scoreboard they might, but both teams played extremely hard and well. Mitchell in the backfield. He's 21 carries, 167 yards, and two touchdowns. Rowe fakes to him and rolls right. And throws a strike for a first down to the 13-yard line. Then the ball is not loose. Was it a catch and fumble? Was it ever a catch? No, it was incomplete. John L. Neal came up and jarred it free. No catch for Spencer. Uh, and you know what? It, did he have possession of the ball? I mean, control. Ball's in the stomach, one foot down. And I tell you, that's pretty darn close. That's a catch, I think. That, that's very close to being a reception. Replay reviews from above. And, uh, boy, that's definitely worth another look. Well, they, you know. We'll look at it again, but evidently the replay official will not uh, he wraps it up he takes a couple of backward steps then Neil knocks it free and now well you see at UCF's trying to call a time and they're, they're calling they're their hoping time out here that you know they're, they're hoping that upstairs will have more time to look at this and row from the pistol Mitchell behind him they clock inside five and it's Mitchell Good burst for about seven out of the 18. Where Stephen Baker and Sharif Rashad bring him down. Well, but you saw the cadence that Jeff Rose working up there, barking, trying to get UCF to jump off sides. They have five offsides calls against them tonight. But that 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 posturing and that delaying up there, it gets that defensive line off their fingertips and gets them neutral a little bit. Just a little bit of an advantage there for the offensive line at, at Nevada. Sports Center coming up next, just past 12.35 a.m. Christmas morning in Orlando. Third and three. And Rowe turns back against the grain, throws complete to Pudowell, the tight end, and it's first and goal at the eight. Joe Burnett recognized too late that the whole play was going right and 83 alone was going left wide open and this goes from the right to the left and this was play this play was open earlier but Jeff Rowe didn't throw it back he stayed play side and so you know that's smart good coaching man you got something in the bag over there and you got to use it no reason to take it home for Christmas Turn that thing upside down and empty it out back to the ground game Mitchell to the five that's it wrapped up by Keith Shalligan yard game of his senior season tonight I'm nearing 200 I think he's what I think his style of play works in the NFL the NFL is not about speed backs I mean there are a couple of guys who can run around the corner but not many fake to him wide open on the left side for the naked boot touchdown Jeff Rowe how about Rowe as a running weapon tonight, his 12th carry for 68 yards and the touchdown to begin overtime. And I'd make a plausible gentleman's bet with you that this was designed to be a handoff. 
because everybody was blocking and, and hitting it up in there. But if, if it's not, it's just excellent execution of selling a run. Jake Olu has missed on only three coming into this game. Perfect tonight, perfect snap and hold, and he hooks that a little bit more than he would have liked, but it's still good. It's 49-42, so the Wolfpack handle their business after losing. They're up here for a reason. Yeah. At some point, they do have to take control of the game. So now UCF, knowing what they need, they need seven to force a second overtime. They start with Kevin Smith, and a nice cutback by the Conference USA Freshman of the Year out of Miami, brought down by Roosevelt Cooks, who has lowered the boom on a number of Golden Knights all night long. He sure has. That youngster man, has he's stepped up in the hole many times, and I think what he did more than anything was he figured out the perimeter game of Kevin Smith and how to get out there with him. Exactly. He got six, second and four. Look at that hole. Smith to the outside, bumps by Wilson, touchdown. Two plays, all it took for Kevin Smith. And with that, he goes over 200 yards. 29 for 202, three touchdowns for this freshman. And, and you know, here, the, your safeties, they're not up in run support. And that UCF offensive line, was able to get into leverage position, blocked off, walled out, and Smith got back into it. Raiders numbers on PATs coming into tonight. Michael Buscemi snaps to John Brown. Kick is wide right, and the battle wins it. Oh, man. you got to be kidding me. And UCF's trip to paradise ends in a nightmare. Matt Prater, who helped force overtime with a late field goal, has been blasting the ball all night. He pushes the extra point wide right, 49-48. Wolfpack, our final in overtime. There's, there's nothing ever automatic about anything. And the pressure here on the kicker is immense. And like you said, Dave, this guy, young man, had come through for his team earlier. UCF really depended on him. And here, the push to the right, it's Santa Claus wearing number two that lives in Nevada. Woo. Oh. Boy, in a game with this many points, 97 points, UCF comes up one short, and Nevada wins the 2005 Sheraton Hawaii Bowl. How about this? In overtime, the Wolfpack finishing up 